groaning like a geezer. I wish I could say I'm not too young to die. Uh, anyway, everybody, welcome to Gray Beard's studio. It's uh, the day before Thanksgiving, which means I'll be cooking uh, bacon pies tonight. And um, we have to do kind of an early Thanksgiving lunch because my son, who's now, of course, married, has to split time between, you know, the two families. So we're getting him for lunch and then he's going over there for dinner. So he gets two meals. Um, so I'm going to be up like tomorrow morning, like 7am throwing the turkey in the oven, just, it'll be ready at lunchtime. Ah, well, what are you going to do? Well, it's a special, special show for a lot of reasons. And you'll, you'll see why in a minute, but, uh, we're doing comic skate characters because you voted for it, but, um, we're not allowed to draw our own comic skate characters. That was sort of the, uh, the restriction put on that uh, by Gary, who came up with this whole thing, because it's his week to choose. So we'll play by Gary's rules. But uh, let me bring in the guys so we can get going on this fine November day. Um, he's uh, he's uh, he's David Williams. There he is. Hey, David. What's that? Is this going to be like a regular thing for you now? Is like doing the uh, the avatar instead of. Uh... I mean, I could do that. Oh, that's right, people. That's right. You it, it freaks people out when you do that. So uh, there you go. I think I think well, you might be onto something there. Okay, uh, he's old, but he's still a good time. It's Gary Martin. There he is. Hey, Gary. Wow, look at that, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Gary's riveted by this award-winning cover. Actually, Dang, are you like snorting cocaine behind there? Because your eyes are like saucers. <laughs> you see, you see how far he had that like spread open. That used to be. It was near mint when I sent it to him. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm like greasy. <laughs> yeah, tear that spine out. All over it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, without further ado, let's bring in our fourth member. It's Kelsey Shannon. Hmm. Yeah. Well, 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 well. So it's just the three of us today, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got the uh, last minute notice from Kelsey that he was taking his mother to uh, someplace for Thanksgiving. I, I think over to grandmother's house, he went through the snow and all that in uh, the bayou. And uh, actually, probably... Uh, what do they call those boats where they use the poles to uh, propel themselves, you know, through the swamps? I'm sure that's probably what he's doing with his dear old mother in the back. Uh, so anyway, there will be no Kelsey Shannon today. So as David and I were talking off camera about this is this is how the show started. It was just actually just we'll get rid of Gary. And uh, there we go. This is how the this, this show just started it was just <laughs> me and David. And uh, before Kelsey joined in. Uh, we'll bring Gary back. I was just, you know, I was trying to illustrate a point. So we're really kind of getting back to our roots during this Thanksgiving holiday season. And, but that doesn't mean that uh, we won't be engaging, entertaining and uh, provide you with some wonderful artwork. Um, the one thing that we will be avoiding this week is Kelsey's constant cheating. So <laughs> fairness, well, fairness, it's, it's you know, Kelsey's not here. Then I, you know, seriously considered uh, finally breaking out my art supplies. And, you know, the chat asked for it, but 
the chat's going to be denied yet again. I am not. <laughs> so what you're saying is you thought about it, but then you came to the same. Yeah, the big no. Not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully you'll uh, still provide witty banter. and uh, uh, That's the goal. That's the goal. All right. Well, let's uh, speaking of witty banter, let's see who's in the chat. I'm sure they're angry and throwing stuff at the screen right now that uh, the bearded one is not here. But uh, Coram is here. It says, can't wait to see the magic you guys bring. Just remember, put a chick in it and make her hot. Uh, that seems to be a formula for success around here. Flying Saucer is here. Halder, 6480, here in the Steadfast. Omer Glitch is here. Leg Kick is here because Leg Kick, of course, is almost always here. Toshiro is here. Ronin, he says, well, okay. Will anyone draw Schmegma from Aaron's book? It is Schmagma. Schmagma. <laughs> S-H-M-A-G-M-A -M -A -M -A is not the same thing. Aaron, oh, you're God. pouring gasoline on the fire. I'm telling you, I'm defending the purity of my character. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Past Master Dan says, in the spirit of Atari Force, I command you. Um, <laughs> yes, in the spirit of Atari Force. <laughs> Wait, the other one didn't does have a cannonball, but that one did. And you don't wow. you don't bring up you do not bring up Atari Force in my my uh, shows. You just don't do it. Uh let's see. Schism says, Hail to the beards of gray hair and Lepresti, a question for your campaign. Will the hardcover be available when it goes in demand? Uh yes, of course it will. Of course it will, Schism. Uh, speaking of which, my campaign, my first 30-day, um, I didn't time this very well. First 30-day uh, uh, closeout is Friday, <laughs> right after Thanksgiving. I'm sure I'll have a huge audience for that, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, well, people so, have the day off. Oh, well, that's true. Uh, so it'll be Friday. And I, think some this, time. I think the people that watch this show are wise enough not to uh, get caught up in that whole black friday scam that's right oh that's right i could do it it's like a black friday sale except nothing will be on sale <laughs> <laughs> brian norton's here all the way from japan um he says wraith of frog let's go oh we could do a mashup well that's kind of funny actually isn't it brian norton's song yes uh repairman jack is here um zade comics of course phil diaz is here um jimmy reyes is here promoting his book uh called dragon ridge there's the link right there in the description or in the uh, chat anakin yudofi is here he says he's missed the last couple of live shows excited to see what you beards cook up today yeah so are we jimmy owens is here hey jimmy thanks for joining us 40 percent zed oh <clears throat> it's a two-parter uh, hey, Lopez, I know we gave you a hard time about the lawless nips, but I'd like you to consider something. I understand why you want mainline product to be family accessible, but is stopping you from making a supplementary product for adult fans. Uh, the same morals that keep me from <laughs> doing it in the first place. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> you need to have a special adjust, addition just for the unedited Dan Lawless piece. That's right. Well, no, it's like uh, I'm. I only pretend to be moral, but if I can make a buck, I will be immoral. No, <laughs> yeah. no. If I, there's I, a demand for it, yeah, that's right. My uh, my standards remain the same, though. Forty percent. Thank you, though, for your suggestion. John is here. Um, Agent Zero, Blackjack, J Dan, the Pizza Man, Genovese. Will you be having pizza for Thanksgiving? Probably not. Nobody has pizza for Thanksgiving. Although I wouldn't mind having some. Uh, Storm D is here. Um, hmm. well, let's see. Uh, Passmaster Dan says, uh, CG characters like me? I knew it. You you really do love me. That's right. We do. Uh, Bretsky the Great is here. Crystal McGee is here. Hey, Crystal. Um, yeah, well, uh, Marcus Killigrew, the purveyor of all things pop culture knowledge, is here. Um, Joe Lowe is here. Uh, David's giving everybody the thumbs up. He's a, he's a friendly guy, especially in the holidays. Spambot is here. How about that? Uh, who else we got here? George Bonnie 90 is here. It says, hail Graybeards. Hail George. Thanks for joining us. 
Yeah, Ruby Jade ninety is here. Thank you for joining us. I Bill have a Weasley. special, special um, note for Ruby. I like to call her Jade. That uh, your piece is coming. I'm trying to wrap up my the art for my art book, and that's delayed it a little bit. But hang in there; it's coming. Delays, delays. Yeah, nothing you may but continue. Delays. Um, Jimmy Owens says, did that not post? I don't know. Uh, hey, Aaron, finally back Kit Carter. So excited after reading that story in Ray too. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it very much. Um, Marby dog is here. Of course, James Murphy. Hey guys, who is drawing JFK and who's drawing Oswald? <laughs> That's right. Today's like JFK day, right? So we could, uh, we can talk. Conspiracy yeah, well, well, I want to talk about that later. What, what, what that is all about. I don't get it. Uh, okay. Well, we certainly can. Uh, Derek is here. Skull Nasher's here. Um, Fatal Life is here. Thanks for joining us. Um, Kelsey is going to post a finished drawing and say he did it during the show. He, he's a cheater. Of course he is. Uh, leg kick for $2. Thanks. For, thank you very much for that. Glad Gary's here. Add some class to the show. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying about you and me, David. Yeah, but, he knows. Uh, yeah, he he knows class when he sees it. Yeah, Jughead Grayson's here. How about that, Brian? Nine nine nine. Receive my Wraith of God, Blood Hunters, beautiful book. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate you backing. Eric Wart is here. Faux peasy, Red Wizard, um, Ronan, Art of Roy made it. There he is. Where's Kelsey? We'd all like to know that, Art Roy. We'd all like to know. You're going to be uh, saying that for the rest of the show. Uh -huh. Because, you know, people who, who come in late. That's right. Where's Kelsey? Where's Kelsey? NTM, Con we should have like a like a banner running across. I could do that. It could. Kelsey is a no Just make it, yeah. Uh, Lord Hinson Comic Skater is here. He says, hail hey, A.A. Ron, got my Blood Hunters. Amazing job. Thank you, Lord Hinson. I appreciate that. Uh, Dan Genovese, he says, I took the day off just so I could watch your stream. Look at that. Dan takes a day off from work just to watch this and Kelsey doesn't show up. Oh, Art of Roy is suggesting calling Andy Smith. He said he just left uh, Ethan's show. There you go. Was well, Ethan streaming against us? Jeez, Ethan, he's, come he's on. doing the Kennedy thing. That's what I want to. Oh, him. okay. Yeah. Eric Hutfeld says I should sell my soul, Lopez, for the mighty dollar. I will. I will. I will do it. Jerry Rasco's here. Uh, who are we missing? Uh, da -da. I think to include everybody. Some guy 209 here and got Wraith of God 2 yesterday. Looking forward to reading it over the Thanksgiving break. Thank you, some guy. Appreciate that. Kellraiser's here. Henry Bemis. I got a beautiful piece of art from D. Wams the other day. How long until the next auction? I'm saving up my money. I don't know. Uh, we're not going to do one at Christmas time because people are spending money for Christmas presents, not original art from us. So it probably won't be till the new year. Uh, Geek Avenger for $2. Your number one troll or fan is here. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Hidden Hand Media is here. I just got shipping notification from Aaron. Can't wait. Oh, yeah. Now all I have to do is package it. Shelly was down there last night for four hours in the middle of the night. Uh, she was like one of those Santa elves, you know, that were those shoe elves, I guess, right? That show up in the middle of the night and like make shoes. Uh, she was like making labels and there's like a stack like this high. I'm like, oh, I better get out there and start packaging that stuff. Um, Victor. Um, I, Vic, of course, being nonsensical as usual, who are you looking for, Aaron, wanting to get revenge or some dictator show support thing? What? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. Thank you, Vic. Appreciate that very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he's accusing you of, of, um, we need it. We need an interpreter. Danny Kelsey. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, let's see. Who am I missing? I think we got everybody here. Um, Fox Mulder. Thank you. Ooh, Ten dollars. Thank you so much, Fox. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. And uh, nothing important happened sixty years ago today, so don't ask too many questions. I know. I well, Fox Mulder. He knows stuff. So especially about the uh, conspiracy type stuff. Ignites here. Birdman Burr is here. Uh, let's see. Hey, there we go. Got to the end of it. To Sol. Oh my goodness. Uh, Sol Kyrialt. I know. That's got to mean something. In, but in one. In one. Yeah. yeah. 
in one. Sol Kiralt in one. Is he new to the show? Uh, I don't know. I've never said that name before. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> but thanks for joining us. Hey, if you are new to the show, even if you're old to the show, please hit the like and subscribe if you have not already. It helps the channel grow so that we can actually afford to get guests when Kelsey doesn't show up. So uh, thank you very much for your uh, your constant support. We would greatly appreciate it now. Uh, oh, Lone Square Viper says salutations. Thanks for joining us. Send Andy a link. Send who? Andy Andy Smith. A link. Oh. Um. So today is the uh, the uh, the official. I guess. What do you call it? The anniversary, I guess, of JFK getting uh, taken out. <laughs> <laughs> Weird to call it an anniversary. <clears throat> Yeah, taken out sounds like he was in a hockey game. Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah. Then JFK gets slammed up against the boards. <clears throat> gets a hockey blade to the throat. <laughs> it's a whole other joke. So, yeah. this, I don't oh, remember. Gosh, is, hey, like, did that get you charged? there being people yes, talking did. about this on, on the anniversary, like, like, there is today. Why is today different than other anniversaries? Well, now, what do you mean? I mean, you I, saying I that, remember last year anybody talking about it? Well, were you not just paying attention, maybe? Maybe. I'm uh, writing a little thing here. I was talking about it. I made a freestyle rap about it. <laughs> 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 Want to hear it? Here we go. No, just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I do actually want to hear it. <laughs> I read an interesting article, not on necessarily JFK, but uh, well, actually, before I get to that, uh, so do you guys have any sort of um, opinions on the JFK phenomenon, you know, conspiracy wise or otherwise? Was it uh, was it presented as it seems or is there something more nefarious going on there? I think a white there's man is going on, but there's so many possibilities that how do you narrow it down to just one? Well, I'm kind of a half conspiracy theorist. I think uh, I think you know we had some government involvement in this. I just kind of now I don't know anything about uh, you know people yeah. talk about second shooter and all that kind of stuff and that's that gets so far into the the weeds that i'm not uh certainly any sort of expert on that and i don't necessarily care enough to do that much research um but i do care enough to do research on uh, king arthur and then we'll be talking about that shortly but david mm -hmm. uh before we do that what what have you got to share with us this week anything um <clears throat> yeah maybe uh I could show a little bit of something. Maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. Do it. Yeah, if you shouldn't, then absolutely do yeah, it. Then absolutely do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys know I'm working on this book called Fearsome for Ethan Van Skyver. So um, this is the, the character, uh, Eli, and we're going to be going into his dream world where he becomes this character <clears throat> in this land of Nod. And here's a page from it. Uh, and uh, here's, here's... Look at that poor shortening. <clears throat> Dang. <laughs> I know. A great shot of a dude behind a wheel. Ooh, we got more. A double page spread where he's going to go see his sick father who's in hospice. And uh, <clears throat> this is the first time he experiences something... Uh, supernatural that comes in so he sees this nurse as this demon like person and he falls out <clears throat> and uh <clears throat> he wakes up <clears throat> into oh i've not world. seen this and so he's getting to see his dream self and this creature you know comes and uh 
is he attacking him or trying to show him something? We don't know. <clears throat> and uh, it's all from you're you're in the the POV of uh, this character in this dream world and stuff. And I think that's all I could share. With you. Um, <clears throat> but it's 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 chugging along. Uh, I'm penciling page seven right now, and uh, want to get this done before Christmas. So you guys have something cool to see. <clears throat> and so that's it. Awesome. Hey, your, your sound is off, Aaron. I was opening a package and while you were talking, so I didn't want the, the paper to... Uh... Oh, how rude. Yeah, I know. Packages yeah. while I'm yeah. showing yeah. artwork. Yeah, but it's packages of your art. Oh, I'm my goodness. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, um, don't, don't dox me this time. No, I won't. I, that's why I did. I took it. I, <laughs> I peeled the paper off with your address on it here. I was, and then I was like, this is going to be pretty noisy. So I muted myself while you were talking. Um, I'm a little disappointed, though, because you used to, you would occasionally would, people would get a commission from you or a grab bag of art or whatever, and you'd do like a drawing on the outside of the paper. And I didn't get a drawing on the outside of my paper. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm a little bummed out about that, but no, that, that looks really, really cool. I know people are anxious to see this book for sure. Um, David's also working on something for me, which uh, we will show down the road. Uh, Gary, what have you got for us here? Um, here's a piece I did a little while ago. I wanted to show the opposite of the red Sonia that I, I did a sneak peek. Uh, sneak peek at that on on uh, Kings on Monday. Hang on a uh, second, hang on a second, Gary. I don't mean to interrupt you, but we do have a guest star. Met the call, heard heard the like we set up the bat signal, and he has responded, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, a favorite of the show, Dan Lawless is here. Woo! Thanks for joining us last minute, Dan. Appreciate it. Dangerous Dan Lawless. Hi guys, how are you? Good, Dan. You Happy Thanksgiving. Coach. Dan, don't you have a life? You're just waiting around for Aaron to, to contact you? I'm sitting right by the phone. I got my hand on the phone, you know? <laughs> He's waiting for that next job. <laughs> Gary, I got the call. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got my red phone, you know. It says Aaron on it, you know. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks, Dan. We appreciate you being Well, here. I also sent out an invite to Andy. If he shows up, we'll really have a full house. So yeah, um, that'd be cool. <laughs> Anyway, so go ahead, Gary, uh, with your. Okay, so this is a re uh, Jaime, Jaime Hernandez uh, recreation. Was and, this a specific uh, commission someone asked you to do, or you just did no, it? No, I just did it because mm -hmm. I thought his gag was hilarious. Because you like uh, fat superhero chicks? Um, well, I wouldn't Don't call Penny Century fat, and her, her dialogue is, but Maggie, <laughs> okay. how will anyone. How is anyone going to tell us three apart? <laughs> See, that's the gag. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, it's just, yeah, sometimes I do recreations just because I can't help it. And that's that's what this it, is. It calls to you. It's like Mike yeah, Barron exactly. says, the, the stories sirens. come to me. The stories pick me. I don't pick my stories. Yeah, they pick it's, me. yeah <laughs> the call of the sirens. Okay. Those you're not so bad, bad. You know, they're not that fat. Yeah, um, they're not fat. They're extra no. juicy. Yeah, they're just yeah. thick. Well, I meant I mean, the one the by the door has got just nice curves. I mean, yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Oh, my oh, goodness. No leaf. And so, out. this is the opposite <laughs> art style. Um, I, like I said, I did a sneak peek of this on Monday. And so now we can get the look at the detail. That hair I, is insane. I wanted to uh, do a couple of things on this piece, and, you know, like my usual two days, and it ended up being three. So I um, spent more time on this than I was intending. Let's see. Let's zoom in. Is this, this going in the book? I mean, Gary, you, yeah, I was going to say, you, going are you giving book. this to uh, Diamond? Are you? Are you? No, are you, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Why not? That should be a cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that kind of dorky? Hey, man, could you use this as a cover? Why not? I do that all the time. Do you? Does it work? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. I did it for a uh, Death Dealer. I mean, um, not Death I did it for um, uh, 
Over Lady Street. Death. I did it for Lady oh, Death. Listen. I just did a Lady Death. Actually, the funny thing is I <laughs> talk about what I, I did it as a red, this big cover as a red Sonja, I know. And I didn't get any response from, from Nick, you know, Barucci. So I just redid it as a Lady Death <laughs> and submitted wow. it that way. <laughs> so and, you've got and, the Lady uh, Death, but not the Red Sonia. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't Nick. I mean, it was it was you know um, who's the guy who's the, who's the Jeppy. Lady Death? Hmm? Well, who did you send it I to? Mean, oh no, no, you sent it to uh, a Brian Polito. Yeah, Brian Polito. Yes. And he so, was like, "Yeah, I'll use this." Yeah, yeah, and it was it was a good cover too. It actually made a better Lady Death than it did a Red Sonia, so it mm -hmm. worked out great. But See, I'll repurpose things if you know. I've, I mean, I've done a lot of the work in it. It's like, you know, kind of frustrating. If it do you work. have those two pieces? I do. I'd like to see them. No, well, maybe I can bring them up. Let's see. Well, yeah, we'll share. Dan, you get you to play. You you're a guest, so you get to play show and tell as well. So anyway, so, those two pieces uh, are available if anyone is interested. And the and the red Sonia is going in into the art book. Oh, that is that is uh, Gary. That is freakish freakishly amazing. I mean, it's incredible. Thank you. Well, as we're waiting for uh, Dan to pull up his files, let me pull up something of Dan's that. Uh, now, see, Dan does this all the time. He'll do a piece, and then you got to go. Okay, now I got to buy this from him. So he like it's 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 a uh, <laughs> yeah, it's manipulation. It's a market manipulation. <laughs> now you see, I removed the nips because Dan has been slow to getting me the uh, revised version. Yeah, yeah actually, uh, you know, so Aaron, you're, you're, Aaron, you're asking about that initially. Like like I told you, it's a low resolution, and it was. But also, yeah. the line work was pretty sketchy, so I wasn't intending it. I mean, again, from the from the start, this was a joke. You know, it was kind of like because right. those guys were making fun about having a phallic symbol and their you know, right, thing. right, right. So I thought I'm just going to make it funny, and then I did. I like, oh shit, this is really good. Yeah. Well, I think by removing, but initially I I did it at low resolution with crappy line quality. So I'm actually going. I'm I am. I had to redo it anyways for to okay. make it nice for print. So I want I want a nice line quality. So I'm working on the line quality. You know, actually, I think I've done almost done with the line. And okay. I'll just use a painting part, of course. That that's that's you can do that at a lower resolution. So we're gonna matter. we're basically at this point, unless my mind changes and I end up uh, putting it someplace else. But this is gonna be in the hard hardcover gallery along with Gary's piece and some other uh, pieces. So. Uh, yeah, I kind of get... felt bad, like I muscled my way into your campaign. Like, well, sorry, you always man. you always do that, Dan. And I, <laughs> but you know, if you do a nice piece, it's kind of like the thing that ticks me off is kind of like I didn't budget for this. I know. That's uh, what I, that's what I said. Pay, pay me what you want. I don't care because I'm going like... to send you a Snickers bar. That's good. Um, so. <laughs> Aaron, I think by you removing those two um, points of interest, you you've changed the point of interest to her face. And I believe that's, that's where it should be. That thing. face is freaking beautiful. That's, yes, that's, that's, what, awesome. that's what pulled me into this drawing. I was like, that face is unbelievably beautiful. Yeah, so, it is. Uh, nice work, Dan. Okay. Uh, but anyway, we're going to throw that up. As soon as Dan gets me the revised piece, the finished piece that he's finished with, uh, I'll put it up on the campaign page as well. So it'll be there as a selling point. Uh, what else you got for us, Dan? Anything? Well, yet? I'm still looking it up here. But okay, I, I'm going to take a right super in. chat here from John for ten dollars. Thank you, John. Appreciate that very much. Gary, when you say recreation, does that mean you start from scratch? Recreation. Here, oh, here. <laughs> hey, hey, Ron. Recreation. You think this is fun? <laughs> I'm getting as bad as you. I can't read. Uh, Gary, when you say recreation. Does that mean you start from scratch with your own pencils? Some guys are great at inking or pencils, but not always both. If you're great at both, that makes me even more jealous, says John. So uh, what do you mean when you say recreation? You want to I'm talk about basically to doing a forgery. That's what a recreation is. It's a forgery. I'm not trying to uh, put my own spin on it. I'm trying to duplicate his inking lines and um, I'm not changing anything. And so I, I got out first and then and then have the copy of the original on my drawing table. And then I try to mimic the inking style as I go along. So there you go. He's a thief. OK, so um, OK, Dan, you want me to pull up the Red Sonia? Yeah, here? I'm set. Ready to go. OK, this is what you did for the Red Sonia. Yeah, I submitted this as, you know, just a, a, a sample. And I thought, you know, it's, it's, she's. Yeah, that definitely should have been a cover. Pretty hot. 
And Once again, Dan, you, you, your faces are just the best, man. I love your faces. <clears throat> I don't love anyway. your face, but I love the faces you draw. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's clear. Oh, yes. And then this is the one I I decided. Oh okay, wow! No oh, one's yeah. buying it. I'll yeah. just go and redo that. You know. And yeah. I actually. Can you put those side by side? Hang on a second. I'm just I'm doing a, a kind of a zoom in here so can, people can see the face. But wow. yeah, this is this went to print. So this actually, is dude, I I actually agree with you. I think it works even better as a lady death. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so, so Brian Pluto was like, "Oh yeah, I'll take that." Yeah, no shit. It's it's like the other guy, uh, Nick. Okay, uh, well, he didn't respond. Well, Nick is okay. Nick. I don't think Nick is too friendly with us, and by yeah. us, I mean uh, the comics <clears throat> gate crowd. So that could be part of the reason. Oh, I thought it was yeah, something happened black. there. I don't know, but it, well, yeah, uh, that's that's because of you, David. Not oh, I thought it was I, what. <laughs> You got ready your black card? <laughs> when did that happen? Uh, there, you go. there you go, Gary. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I do like that better as a Lady Death piece. For yeah. whatever reason. I mean, I, you know. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm well, you know, I was I was, I was trying to do like a bit of I was trying to do a bit of an Adam Adam uh, Hughes style and I and mm -hmm. I, I kinda overdid it with the, the the black line around it and I should it didn't, you know. <clears throat> It wasn't. I don't I think really so. No, that. I don't think so. I don't think so. Your leg looks really long. <laughs> no, that's all right. You got a, a George Petty thing going. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, it's better as as Lady Death. Yeah, yeah I like it. So very nice. You snooze, you uh, lose. H for Heretic says Dan draws great bobs. Bobs. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a cross <laughs> that's a cross between babes and boobs. I think. Um, <laughs> Um, Past Master Dan says he's talking about now. Of course, uh, Dan has a his YouTube channel where he does art instruction, which uh, is getting very very popular because he got some really cool stuff going on there. He says watching Dan do a, a repop of Frazetta was very cool. You're getting a yeah. lot of positive fun. feedback on that video for sure. Um, yeah, that that's was, the thing. I'm really I'm, excited by. I'm, I'm excited by the, the. You know, I'm putting up. I'm trying to put up really good quality stuff and. Uh, and I'm getting really good responses, like the one how to draw the female figure made easy. Like mm -hmm. I'm getting pe people going, hey, I, I, and this is my method. And I showed to people like, hey, this worked. I tried it and it worked. And I love to hear like like people, because I, I look around, I see some of these tutorials and they're trying like how to draw the female figure. And I watch them like, this is not going to help anybody. It's too confusing. It's not simple. <laughs> yeah. you, you got to break it down, you know? You I know. Them. There's so many. How just not, to, they just don't know how to teach on, this on, stuff. On YouTube, I mean, I, there's a thousand uh, inking tutorials on YouTube that just make me cringe when I yeah. see them. Well, if you haven't heard of the guy that's doing it, there's probably a good chance you probably shouldn't be watching it. Um, you know what you do? I always skip to the end, see what the results are first, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then see what I'm watching. I, like, I don't like where this is going. Uh, John says, okay, so that you're doing pencils as well to mimic the other artists or using their pencils. That's the part I'm confused on because if you're doing pencils as well, then that's insane. No, no, no. I'm because that you can't find pencils and inks, or rarely can you find that. You know, so I I I trace in pencil the actual like the inked copy, and then I inked then I ink on those pencils. So I don't do a blue line. So I I light box the inked version in pencil. And then I ink that with, you know, and trying to mimic the inking. You know, so it's, yeah, if, if I, if I inked from the original pencils, then I think more of me would come through. If I'm trying These to do all, a pure recreation. A lot of what Gary's doing, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but these are a lot of these are exercises for you to see if you can capture someone else's style. Right. You it's a learning approach yourself. It, yeah. It's a learning exercise for me. <clears throat> you really can get into the head of the original artist and look, you see some of the decisions they're making and, and they might be using techniques that I'm not familiar with or, or have, have not done that much. You know, so it's a really good teaching. Um, it's like exercise. when Steve Rude has, does like a whole giant sketchbook full of Loomis recreations, you know, or you know, uh, line decker and stuff like that. It, it, it elevates 
your understanding of how to get to, you know, Z from, you know, A. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me show you some of the stuff that I have. And I, um, I'm going to show, cause I showed the stuff I had, I've been fulfilling. That's all I've been doing. So I haven't really been drawing that much. So all the new stuff I had, I showed last week, but I do have this, uh, this is new to me. And, uh, let me, um, switch over to my drawing camera. Oh, look, there's an award-winning cover. <laughs> Here we go. Here you guys haven't we seen go. that. Uh, the wraparound cover, so it's of course 38 cool. minutes. Yeah, yeah. If, if you it guys want to know 38 minutes to refer you to, to your award winning the difference cover. between an award winning cover and a not award winning cover, this is what an award winning cover looks like. So, just I don't yeah, know I got, how that I got, got nominated as a cover. It's a not award winning cover. I don't know how that got in there. Um, hey, did you get a, something in the mail for that award? Not yet. They send a little certificate that uh, says. Oh. You know something, but uh, okay. So you guys know in the Kit Carter campaign, we have some trading cards. Now this is the original art by David Williams. Um, it's on eleven by seventeen board. I am going to put these up on the camp. Maybe I'm going <laughs> to rephrase that. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll end up keeping them. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but uh, I may put some of these up on the campaign. Uh, of course, all the proceeds will go to David Williams. But um, this is the click card, and this is the art to the card that you get. Well, you get the card um, if you signed up early for the campaign. If you didn't, uh, it's going to cost you money to get one of these, but just five bucks. But um, I've got to get it colored first before I post it up on the uh, campaign page. But that is the original, and that is Click, uh, the one of the robots from my Power Cubed. Uh, comic. Um, then one of the stretch goal that everybody will get, one of the stretch goal cards, is this is called, this is the Power Blaster. He's another robot from uh, uh, Power Cubed. And you'll get this. We've already hit this stretch goal on the Kit Carter campaign, so everybody will be getting this card, of course. So be colored. Um, and then another man of mystery, Empiris. Those of you who backed the very first uh, Kit Carter, uh, pardon me, uh, Wraith of God campaign, got this guy as a sticker in part of the sticker set. Well, this is the trading card for him. You have a little bit of information about him on the back. And uh, David's actually doing a solo story, his origin story for me, which will be a backup in Wraith of God 3. So uh, we've got new and cool stuff coming your way. Nice. Uh, Empire Comics. So these are these two cards have already hit the stretch goals. So you guys will be getting these as part of your uh, just free with your order when you back Kit Carter. And uh, so that's what uh, <clears throat> David has been up to. And this is like uh, the prelim pencil, which I'm definitely keeping this. Now, so. uh, you 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 rake me over the coals for not giving you an extra drawing, but I gave you all the extra prelim stuff. Oh, they're in here. Oh, ha, they're still in the box. Uh huh. Yeah, let's take a look at those real quick. Uh huh. Uh huh. Good oh, thing, yes. uh, David. Good thing you gave them a heads up because that would have been in the in the bin. Right. So there's the first click design, which I thought was pretty cool, and uh, but then this is the the rough for the one we end up choosing to go with because he's actually inside the cube in this, which I thought was a pretty Pretty uh, cool, high concept idea. Then um, we had uh, this one for a power blaster, which is also really, really good. But I thought it was maybe there, there it is again, a little cleaner. I thought maybe it was too uh, obvious, and so this down shot I thought was kind of more interesting. So we went with that even though I like that one a lot as well. Um, and then we had a couple of uh, these with my Empiris choices were, I like the dynamic of the hand coming at you as opposed to uh, his hand down at his sides here like this. And then of course the, uh, the energy source right there. So uh, 
Anyway, so those are all the uh, prelims that David did for these incredible cards that he sent me that you guys will be getting as part of Kit Carter campaign. Uh, so, uh, and you also um, find the uh, description to all of our campaigns. Uh, pardon me, the links to the description, uh, oh, the links to the campaigns in the description of this video. Uh, so you guys want to check those out if you have not already. Aaron, um, would you, Aaron, would you have been uh, happier if David would have taped those uh, drawings on the outside of the box? Yeah. No, I wanted an actual new drawing on the brown paper that time. So, <laughs> so anyway, okay. So Dan, are you? You know, you jumped in here late, but are you? Uh, are you prepared to draw live? Well, I was going to ask you, can I can I do uh, digital? Draw my photo? Hey, you big baby, go ahead. You can do digital. But can we see the screen while you're working on it? Yes. Okay, all right, fine. Dan's all set up for that. I know. He has you his can... own draw, drawing stream. You uh, you uh, new age artists. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we, will, we will allow you to. Now, so we're doing uh, Comic Skate characters, but you can't do your own characters. And David yeah, is giving me the middle finger saying I can do whatever I want, which he usually does. So, uh, so David, what are you going to be doing today? <clears throat> Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Reading a CG comic. No, just kidding. <laughs> Oh, is there a bunch of super chats I've missed in here, Gary? You're supposed to be keeping up on that, man. Uh, I think he got them all. Okay. Yeah. I no. could There's seven of them. Have you got? Have you read seven? Uh, no. Geek Avengers for two dollars back and to the left. Hmm. See, I'm sure that probably meant something when he put it in there, but now I don't know what he's talking yeah, about. The context is missing. That's what uh, happens when I go to the bathroom. Yeah, somebody say how's uh, name leg name? kick for two dollars says JFK was killed because he didn't like Atari Force. <laughs> Damn, wow, <laughs> wow. that's, that's his, the that's best theory <laughs> I've heard yet. That's the implication <laughs> that I'm next. Yeah, that's right, so, Aaron. You're in trouble. <laughs> so, self defense, self defense is completely called for in this instance. So, He's you, not, know, he, you got he, he got, got shot first. That's all that's right. You got you to strike, man. You got to strike first. Um, See, I didn't know that. JFK hated Atari Force. <laughs> mm. Geek Avenger for another $2. Thank you, Geek. Appreciate it. Debbie Harry, Inner Prime as Kit Carter. Hubba. Yeah. I can see that. Sure. Yeah, actually, that's kind of what you're... I think maybe they're referring to Dan's piece. It kind of has a Deborah Harry look to her oh, face. Oh, no. Dan's piece was more wholesome. <laughs> Debbie Harry oh. had a... Had a... Uh, yeah. had a, uh, <laughs> had an edge a to her. To her. Mm. That's not exactly awesome. a compliment. I don't, I don't know draw horse awesome, <laughs> Oh, they're explain. They're explaining the back. David, did you say horsem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like, about right there. Killerazor yeah. is explaining uh, uh, Geek Avenger. Then Geek Avenger followed up by explaining himself. But basically, Oliver Stone's JFK move with Kevin Costner back into the left for the. Ah. Uh, the shot back into the left. Yeah, was I thought that was in. a Seinfeld line. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was the episode where Keith Hernandez was a guest star, yeah, right? And he had the second movie. spitter. Yeah, the second spitter. Yeah. yeah. Good times. So, okay, so uh, Dan, uh, what are you going to draw for us? Well, there's two characters that I actually really think are super duper cool, and yeah, I have one of them was Black Terror. You, you said that? What? Oh, sorry, Dan. Let's go back to David. Uh, what are you no, going to draw, not... David, other than Batman? I'm doing fearsome. Okay, so you're cheating anyway. Mm -hmm. You might as well draw Batman. It's not mine. It belongs to Ethan Van Skyver. Well, Gary, I think your intent was that we don't draw stuff that we're already working on, right? Yep, that was my intent. See? Uh, you, yeah, you are specific. <laughs> See, David makes his own. He said that we don't own. It's a double whammy. You're promoting it's... and... and it's... Right. Well, Dan, don't defend him, cheese. I'm, I'm not going to bring you back him. on the show again if you're going to go down that you're road. You're totally defending me. Thank you, Dan. I no, you. don't. <laughs> I got you back. Uh, <laughs> all right, Dan, what are you going to do for us? Uh, there's two characters I, I think are really cool, and, and I, one of them is Baron Blood from Graveyard Shift. I always dig that character. Mm. And then the other one's Black Terror. I think I'm going to do a Baron Blood. Okay. 
Now there I mean, was no a professor, Baron professor Blood, Blood, professor Blood. I think it's professor okay. I was going to say Baron Blood was Marvel, wasn't it? It was like yeah. John Malin ripping off Marvel. No, professor, um, Black professor Blood. I think that's one of his names. I think he's got other names too, but okay. Professor Blood, David, would you, you made a black joke? What? <laughs> I already said, I already did a black. Terror. I, hey, I ain't talking about Obama. I did a black terror already. <laughs> I caught that, David. Yeah, so did I. Uh, <laughs> Razmain says intent is ninety nine percent of the law. So, so Gary's intent does uh, does count here. It's valid. And plus, uh, uh, how Aaron worded the poll, the description of the poll, he was paraphrasing how I put it to him. Right. Mm -hmm. well, I had to, you know. Yeah. So there, there was some translation there. Lost in translation, I guess. Uh, Paul Brillart, here it comes. Where's the Louisiana swamp monster? Uh, he has uh, He's on his way to grandmother's house for Thanksgiving. So Dan Lawless has generously agreed to step in. Another swamp, Michigan. And take, yeah, a different kind of swamp. <laughs> All right, I'm doing pit. So, Ooh, cool. Yeah, go. I thought about possibly doing that one. Okay, well, well gentlemen, you, you had your chance. I know. Red gentlemen, ready, yeah. go. Push the button. All right, I'm, I'm not sure I can, how I can do this. Actually, share my screen or what? This is so typical. Where's my pencil at? Oh, how? I'm like I'm in an art studio. I am an artist, and I can't find a pencil. How is that even possible? In a Geek Avenger, it's too late. <clears throat> uh, they've already called out who they're going to draw. So, chat. Stop giving suggestions. <laughs> Wait, maybe I'll we maybe always I'll get that. Let like me look 30 at minutes after you started, they're <laughs> suggesting characters. Uh, maybe I'll look at the comments and, uh, and maybe there's something that looks cool. Well, what about the Texarkana booger monster? What is it? I don't even know what he's talking about. I don't either. You guys are making the assumption that we actually read comics. No. We just make comics. Uh, way to come prepared, Aaron. Yeah, I know. I found it. I found my blue pencil, so. You only I have can't. that one? Huh? You only Is that have the only one you have? Uh, well, without opening up a box of new ones, which. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I should have known. I don't want to go down that route unless I have to. So, Dan, what, what's your situation? Are you still trying to figure out how to pull it up? Yeah, let me see uh, if I. Uh, you seem confused, Dan. I'm I'm figuring it out. Hang on. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you you better have a thick thicker skin because you're gonna get it. That's all <laughs> right. Next I can three hours. You're yeah yeah. You'll either be stronger or you'll run away weeping. <laughs> Hey, there! You go on like a like a John Malin show or Ethan Van Skyver show. You, you're you're pretty toughened up. Yeah, that's right. Time you're done. This is this, this is a cakewalk, you guys. This isn't a softball like it was the first time. <laughs> the cakewalk, the gray beard cakewalk. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting my uh, breaks done at uh, this place last week, and I was stuck in there for two hours. And so, you know, I watched a little TV news and, oh, God, I could not take it. Uh, I will share this real quickly. One of the things on the news was, this was a local news broadcast, and there's a, there's a Portland teacher strike going on, or at least there was. I don't know if it's been resolved yet or not. Hey, Aaron, oh, can yeah, I interrupt for a second? Just means, uh, give them more money. Aaron, yeah. can I interrupt for just a second? Can you switch sure. me for my, uh, for my, my screen that's shared? Oh, dang it. Oh, can I switch you? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, yeah, just... I don't uh, know that I can do that, actually. Ooh, give it a shot. Well, no, it says if you if you click on it, then it becomes like the preeminent right. thing. Exactly. Which, we had that problem with Rini, remember? And I said, you're not hogging oh, the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, so you, can't, like, you can't, like, switch then, me. She showed what she was doing every once in a while. You can't switch no, me as a primary. Think, Okay, well, no, in because that case, this is attached I'm, to you. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I could, I mean, it, if you give me a minute, I could do it. I could set up to draw. Uh, yeah, hurry up. 
Get on. You got more. Under limit. I give so. you sixty seconds. Sixty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Does everybody know that yeah. I got this notice like 20 minutes before the show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan, it doesn't matter how long you take because all of this time, setup time, is, is cut out of your drawing time. <laughs> okay. That's right. So just as long as you pace yourself accordingly, Dan, you'll be fine. Um, okay. So I'm watching the news and this they're interviewing students. And this girl says, this high school student girl, the interviewer, and she says... She says these words, ladies and gentlemen, because this lets you know that we're in the 21st century. She says, my mental health is being adversely affected by this. And I thought when we were in school and there was a teacher strike or yeah, we missed it school, was you who party. Yeah, I know. Exactly. It was like we were out having a good time and, uh, I just, I was like, I could not believe my ears. Like, yeah. Are you mad? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you're just like, because you can't go to school. You're, you have, you're, yeah, I don't know. Imagine yeah, a, a girl like that, you know, trying to walk from New Jersey to Oregon in, in the, you know, wagon train days. She wouldn't make it <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> oh. But after that news report, that got me to walk away from I couldn't take it anymore. And so I found this magazine, which was a Smithsonian magazine, right? So you'd think that you'd get some quality, um, uh, uh, you know, some articles. Uh, thank you. And uh, I was going to say a quality truth, but it's like, is there <laughs> Quality truth. I mean, now we like. Oh, the Smithsonian's known for their shenanigans. Okay, all right. So then, I probably can't expect this necessarily no. true. But it, it was, I thought, an inter interesting article. They were searching for. Wait for it. No, not Bigfoot. King Arthur, and the legend of King Arthur. Back. See, that's become a real thing these days the people forget that some dude made it up well that's that's the interesting thing because they they didn't deny that the actual writings were uh fabricated but because obviously you've got this mystical stuff and this magic and things like that but they did what they were questioning was was this guy's story based on an actual character out of yeah. history and then yeah you romanticized to a point of being fiction. And so that's what kind of what they were searching for. And I found it to be very interesting. And one of the things that was, I, I remember saying to myself right when I read it, it was like, nothing ever changes. So what, what, they're, what they were suggesting was the original writer, which I want to say was, uh, was it like in 500? Well, they said in 500 BC, the Romans left, they were occupying what is now Great Britain, right? And they left it because they were getting hit on other sides from barbarian invasion. So they could no longer uh, maintain their grip on Great Britain. So they let it go. And so then Great Britain was like getting attacked by the Saxons all the time and all this kind of stuff. And, and um, so this guy came out with this, these stories, this monk or whoever it was, I don't remember. It's not important to the story that he basically uh, created this legend, right? That people could sort of, <clears throat> you know, in a time when they were constantly being attacked by the Saxons, they needed a hero, this kind of thing. And so he created this Arthurian legend. And um, I thought to myself, wow. So basically what you have is, a politician making a decision or someone, you know, uh, maybe you wouldn't describe it directly as a politician at that time, but someone, a leader, um, cultural leader, civic leader, whatever, making up something out of whole cloth to make because he knew what was best for the people, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, man, where have we seen that before? Yeah. And um, but anyway, so they created this legend. And there is some evidence to support that there may have been an actual King Arthur or a character that this was based on. Um, but Aaron, Aaron, 
your Italian little pressy is coming out because you're not yeah. drawing, <laughs> you're just gesturing with your hands. I know, I know, I know. Um, so, but I thought it was really interesting. So, what happened was this story of King Arthur grew and spread throughout Europe, and different uh, writers took a hold of it and added stuff to it. So, for example, this French poet got a hold of the story. And he made up out of whole cloth Sir Lancelot, right? It wasn't even in the original <laughs> legend. He created the whole love triangle between uh, um, Lancelot, Lancelot and yeah, and um, King Arthur and some French guy, right? And it stuck. And then, then it got passed around. Someone else added, you know, Excalibur got added and all this kind of stuff that wasn't in the original uh, tale. And uh, so I thought that was really kind of fascinating that how you have just a multitude of authors that have contributed to this legend as a whole that we have now that we kind of take for granted as the legend of King Arthur. But all yeah. these details, Sword in the Stone, that was another guy, you know, that added that later. And um, it, it was really fascinating. I yeah. think uh, I think uh, the same thing has happened to uh, COVID, the Atlantis uh, legend. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? He said COVID. Said COVID. Uh, COVID. No, the Atlantis legend that some old Greek dude, you know, talked about it, and now, now, you know, it's it's, it's an actual thing in history, and just right. how it, it's kind of spun out of control the same way. It is, it is really interesting how people, it, well, okay, getting, getting the stuff that I do on my show regularly on Sunday is uh, cryptids and stuff. You've got the, the only, or the, pardon me, the first photograph of the creature, of uh, creature from the life of God. <laughs> yeah, really? You have that? Yeah, I do. I have it. It's amazing. Um, it's in 3D and no. Uh, so <laughs> the... The uh, the very first published or picture of the Loch Ness monster is a certifiable certifiable fake, and everybody knows it is. It's been you know, and yet that is what started the whole legend. So you have Ooh. people looking for a creature that was made up from the very beginning, and now, but you've got people that actually believe it's there when there's. <laughs> <laughs> the only you know, they have, they have, don't they have like gift shops there and you know yeah, like exactly. this whole industry tourist industry built on that and see i contend the same thing with the patterson gimlin film of with bigfoot is that that whole thing is fake and that's what the entire big or at least the modern bigfoot legend is based on is this fake film and now you got people out there wandering in the woods for days and weeks looking for something looking for that it. was yeah. made up in 1969 yep at least in my opinion. <laughs> yep. Okay, Dan, are you are you I think set so. up now? Can you hear me? So you're gonna you're gonna draw old the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way. Steve, that's what we do on this show. We force people to do it the right way, Dan. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> the right way. The 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 ethical way. That's right. I think it's even better. It's, uh, it's not just the right way. It's the ethical way, Dad. You know, I, I remember a few years back, I was doing storyboards, and I went into this agency. And as well as agencies, all the desks are open. There's not even any dividers or anything. And I just go in there with my pencil case and paper. <laughs> and everyone's tapping away. What at the, the hell computer. is that? Everyone's <laughs> tapping away at, with their computer. And I'm just like, <laughs> suddenly, like, I got my little portable pencil sharpener, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, let me did, did, lick the tip of this thing here. The only thing. Yeah, they're, all, they're gathered around your table. They're confused. They're like, what what's that? What's that? What that doing? Portland what you... high school girl say? My my. My mental health has been. My mental health, health is yeah. Been negatively affected. <laughs> negatively affected by your pencil sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> Make it stop. Let me catch up a little bit on the chat. Um, yeah, that, Sean yeah. Allen, I wish I had a, a, a Canon video. Gary fondly remembers the wagon train days. 
<laughs> fondly. I love it. It's not you just remember them, but you fondly remember fondly them. Fondly remember, yeah. All that walking. I, I, I still cringe when I think about it. <laughs> and uh, Don Malin's in the chat, and he's he sounds okay. happy that Ke Kelsey's not here. Yeah. Of course. Jeez. Well, he's got and I'm going to draw uh, Professor Blood. John, is that correct? For Professor Blood is the name, right? Yeah, John, give us clarification. Uh, Dan's drawing one of your characters here, and he believes it's called Professor Blood. So if you could verify that. The past master Dan is, is uh, claiming that aliens are Nephilim. See, that's a whole nother topic. Oh, my gosh. Now we're that's getting into the weeds. Uh, yeah. Yep. Let's see. Yeah. Guinevere Schism. Thank you. That's that's who we couldn't think of, of Arthur's uh, wife. His, Guinevere. We prefer to call it Arthur's Squeeze if we're using technical, yeah. uh, you know, modern terms. And then Jimmy Reyes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Plato was the one who wrote about Atlantis. But yeah, he's still, I was not incorrect. I said an old Greek dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's like really old now. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's really correct okay let's see i'm way behind sheesh and see z comics is still it's, it's still wondering where kelsey is see i, I told you you're going to be talking about no. this for the rest of the show well you've been here long enough you shouldn't know that he's on his way to grandmother's house see Maybe if i and, talk like kelsey like hey guys <laughs> <Kelsey here. laughs> how's it going here <laughs> Perfect. Oh my gosh, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Tisman 74. I mean, nobody, am I saying that correctly? They don't really TS4, I can't tell 34. the I need some PC. Can my... you draw the sniper Lee Oswald for extra credit? <laughs> I think so. What to to uh, keep in, in the spirit of the this festive day? Is that what the No, I, I don't have time to draw two shooters, okay? I can only draw one character. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, it's great. <laughs> wow, is that Kelsey? It's like it's like he's here. <laughs> well, they can't see, you know, my face, so that you know, I, I can I could fake it. Right? Well, I think, I don't know by the by the time, by the end of the show, you may have it. You know, you just keep working on it. All right, you know. it, I, it caught me off guard. I, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> Dan will be here all week, everybody. Make sure you tip your waves. Oh my gosh. And so, Henry, uh, yeah, go ahead. Jeremy is asking me who are my favorite top 10 old school favorite inkers. Um, oh, Henry, okay. if you have my inking book, hey, hang I on, give us your Mount Rushmore. I have a list. Give us your Mount Rushmore. You can only put okay, hold on a second. Let me, let me grab my that book and I'll read my okay. Off the dome, say who your favorite are. I know that's pretty lame, Gary. No, because there's a lot of them. Well, you can no. I said four. Five. Give me your top four, dude. Like Mount Rushmore of Anchors. Two for six. Uh, Brazetta. Oh. His comic book work is untouchable. What he did in, in comics is just amazing. Uh, go Senate. Senate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shoot. The rest of them, I could fill in. Terry Austin would have to be in there. Not, yeah, probably. Yeah, Terry Austin in his his X Men days. I think he was just amazing, and I I studied as much as I could get my hands on. I was highly influenced by Terry Austin, even though my style doesn't show it. Well, you were you were his uh, assistant there for a while, weren't you? No, not Terry. Um, but he he did kind of take me under his wing and and he took me around to the different companies oh, and he okay. gave critiques okay. and stuff like that. How did you how did you end up hooking up with him if he weren't like I met him, him I I was living in San Jose and he was a New York guy and he came to San Jose uh, to do a show and he did a signing at a local comic shop the day before and no one showed up. And so he was sitting really? there or, yeah, he was sitting there for two hours as pretty much my my captive. 
because I was the only one there. And he promised to uh, send me some stuff to work on. And then he would, I would, back then there was no email. So dude, this is like during his X-Men days? Yeah. And nobody showed up. No one showed up. That is, ladies and gentlemen, is why you don't do store signings. <laughs> Holy crap. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I had him for two hours and he's, you know, he was kind enough to sit there and answer all my questions. And he promised when he got back to New York that he would mail me Xeroxes of uh, pencil pages that he was working on and that I could ink them on overlays and mail them back to him. And, and he would critique them and then mail them back to me. So a couple of weeks after he got home, uh, I got a package in the mail and it had several pages of John Burns X-Men pencils and uh, Michael Golden's uh, Star Wars story pencils to these because those were the jobs that he was working on at the time. <laughs> so I, I um, struck gold. Yeah, apparently. Terry Austin. So then when you went back to New York, you guys were all had already connected. So he was showing you around and that right. Was... And then he took me to Marvel and DC and and to the Dick Giordano studio and uh, Neil Adams uh, continuity in, in New York. Did uh, were you doing any um, assistant work officially with someone like in studio or was it just you were assigned assistant work that came available kind of thing? There was nothing official. It was just um, guys that would give me work. Um, on a regular basis, I got probably more background inking assist work from Dick Triodano than anybody else. Um, and was that and that was because you we were actually went into the office, got your name around between and, the time that I went to New York and and met Giordano at a studio, and the time that I moved there, DC hired him as an editor. So I was able to go into the, his office at DC and he would give me I stuff to do. And there were other artists there that also needed background artists uh, assistant. And so I worked for uh, Bob Smith, uh, Steve Mitchell, um, who else? Several others. Uh, Bob Layton was um, Giordano's assistant for a while. So he got a hold of me and I did some did some work for him, uh, guys like that. So that was my um, entry in DC where I was going into the office probably about once once a week. And I did that for a while until- And so that, that's you, these, these guys weren't necessarily calling you. They were, you'd go in there and say, oh, this guy needs help. And then they would just give you the pages or whatever. Right, well, every once in a while, someone that had seen me would contact, uh, uh, Giordano and get a hold of me through him. I got you. So, were so were you living by yourself in New York at this time? Yep. Or? I rented a room and was burglared twice in New York. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was Where? tough. You know, when you literally, I was making, I was making about fifteen dollars a day. <laughs> oh my God. Making backgrounds. How did you? And, uh, and so when someone comes in and, and steals the little, you know, <laughs> measly belongings that you have, it, it makes it tough. It's like the, <laughs> you know, the, the definition of, of poverty. I'm sitting on the subway going into Manhattan, reading the, the little billboard advertisements in the train about qualifying for food stamps. And it's <laughs> like, <laughs> am I making the right career choice here? Well, did. So did you go to New York with any sort of uh, like money in the bank to help? Because I had, I had uh, $3,000 and I spent that pretty quickly. So, okay. Well, what were you paying for this room a month? I don't remember. It, it was, it was in a, an apartment with, it was a two bedroom apartment and the landlord split the apartment so there was another tenant in the other room renting the other room and we shared the bathroom and the kitchen so it was just a bedroom and shared bathroom and kitchen 
and it was you know pretty small it was in it was in flushing which is like the okay. uh eastern part of queens the last stop on the uh the subway <laughs> was uh flushing <laughs> well, uh, so gary did you make eventually make more money than that i mean like like you know do you i mean <laughs> no i still make no i just i just not i'm saying like i like, still make 15 dollars a day was that a, was that a temporary situation like that yes it was and, and for me it, it wasn't just about the money it was a learning experience because like especially giordano like i would come in with pages and he would sit down with me and like grab a piece of uh, uh vellum and lay it on top of a page and show me techniques you know here's how you do uh water you know like here's you know difference between river mm -hmm. water and an ocean water you know stuff like that and so he he would always always show me something and so every time i went in i i learned something that i could that i could use right away textures how, and you know right here's right. how to do folds you know things like that how long did this new york adventure last I lived there for six years. Um, so at some point you actually me, were getting actual ink jobs, not just assistant work then. Yeah, it took me probably about a year and a half before I started getting uh, full inking gigs. So I was doing, I was doing backgrounds uh, for about a year and a half, I think. A rough, you know, estimate. So you're basically starving for a year and a half. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, you know, that's the beginning artist for all of us. I mean, I remember just like. Uh... I mean, there were times that, that <laughs> I would go into, <laughs> go into um, the office. I have to take the subway from Flushing, Queens into Manhattan and Rockefeller Plaza, where DC was, the, the uh, Warner Communications building. Yeah. Um, to turn work in, because a lot of times, you know, when you're doing background work, you have to exchange pages. So I would like maybe do three pages and then take them in and trade them with the inker. And so they would give me more pages and then they could ink the figures on the pages that I had. And I didn't have enough money for a subway token to go home. So I had to like hang around the office and ask people <laughs> if they give you a lift so I could buy a subway token. That's how broke I was. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was it was tough. Sacrificing for your craft. Yep, exactly. You know, when I when I started off my career, I, I was renting a, a room just for my brother at his at his house. And, and uh I was dating my wife at the, at the time and uh so he, he comes up from the basement from the wash and he holds these these this underwear <laughs> <up>. <laughs> he's like so what, what do you think of these to, the, to my wife and it was almost disintegrated it was almost a thong <laughs> but i didn't have money to replace anything so <laughs> all my shirts and clothes had holes in them and but this this is like there's almost nothing left barely covered the private part <laughs> 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 but that's it was like, like you no, know, you got you know you're, when you're poor, you're poor, and that stuff. But yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, those are like the jungle adventures with Dan Wallace kind of exactly. Pants, or pants, right? so they I still work. They covered important parts, you know. I can't say that I was ever that destitute on my own. I mean, when I I got back from film school. I moved back in with my parents, which is like the ultimate humiliation when you're like 25 years old and you're like, I shouldn't be here. I know. That's, yeah, that's a step yeah, that's down tough. when you know fun. And uh, of course, that's when I ran into everybody I knew from high school, right? Was when, hey, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. what, 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 <laughs> right. employed, what are you doing? You know, kind of thing. And, yeah, you're working at Der Wiener Schnitzel and, and living yeah. with your parents. Yeah, I, um, I was, I got this job at Epson and at an epson plant and i was just basically i was the garbage dude i was picking up cardboard and uh it just so happened of course one day i was in there making the rounds and they, they had like these conveyor belts set up right where they would just they were assembling all this machinery <clears throat> and everything came in a box right and they would they'd wheel them in on a cart 
all these parts and then they would just break open these boxes and there'd just be piles of boxes at the end of these conveyor belts right or at the beginning of my guess was that a lucille ball scenario yeah kind of, well no because i wasn't it wasn't a, i wasn't on the actual assembly line i was just picking up the card <coughs> um and uh so i'm out there making my rounds and i see that they're they're touring like some executives or something right around the plant and I'm looking at him, and sure enough, there's a guy who was a year what older. Did you do from high school. High school. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it was not only that; it was a guy I couldn't stand. He was like a rival kind of, you know, character. Yeah. And so it was like the worst possible scenario. And <clears throat> I thought, I, and it was like, I, I was thinking, I'll just hide back here till he's gone. But you know, you see the cardboard mountains piling up, and you're like, I can't, I can't hide back here for a half hour. I've got to go do my job. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to suck it up and go do it. Wow. And I went out there, and you should have seen the, uh, the shall we say, the S eating grin on his face when he saw me. <laughs> and he was like, Aaron, how's it going? <laughs> and I was brutal. like, all I could do is go, ah, it's straight, man. Things are going great. And then I just kept on walking, and I was like, oh. My gosh. Why? Where, where is he now, though, Aaron? Where is he now? Yeah, I don't know. He's probably still doing better than me. But at least I have a job now. Well, no, actually, no, I don't. So, <laughs> yeah, freelancers, yeah, we can consider ourselves unemployed. But Dan has a, a real job, right? I'm just a freelancer, but I, you know, I don't do oh, okay. exclusively comics. Um, I have to read Henry Bemis's comment. He says, and oh. That was the day that Gary became a gigolo, entertaining rich New York housewives. <laughs> yeah, that was like uh, Urban, not Urban Cowboy. Uh, what was the Midnight Cowboy? Midnight Cowboy. Yeah. So one time, um, I realized I had no money. I mean, I was literally broke and, and had no food in the cupboard. And I wasn't getting paid till Friday, and and it was Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm sitting there trying to think, okay, what can I do to get <laughs> some food for two days? Is my booty worth buying? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, being a good Christian boy, I, I you know, I. Uh, gave up yeah gave up my my um efforts to do everything on my own that evening the guy who was renting the room in the apartment we shared the phone bill and he came home and uh he was a teacher came home brought the mail and it was the it was the phone bill and he said, here's this month's phone bill, and here's my half for the phone. And he gave me cash. Mm. So that that money fed me for the next couple of days until I got my uh, paycheck on Friday. And then what did no. you do? Um, so that's, no. that's how tight things were for me in those days. What was your question? Yeah, I said, so then you spent the money for the phone bill. So then who paid the phone bill? <laughs> well, that, I used, I used my, uh, my paycheck to okay. pay the phone bill. Well, when I was at, when I was at USC going to film school, and of course, living in LA is not much different than living in New York in terms of, uh, you know, cost. And, uh, <clears throat> I would live on uh, $20 a week for groceries Great. and I would take a calculator with me uh to the grocery store and every time i took an item i would put it on the calculator so i added up so i made sure that i was under 20 dollars every time i got to the uh to the cash register <clears throat> and um these guys my roommates my friends were they were like well want to go out to the bar or whatever right and i would always go no i can't go i can't go and my roommate got really ticked one time because he was like what are you just like too good to hang out with us or something you know and <clears throat> He grabbed my checkbook and looked through it, and there was like there was like five bucks in there. And he goes, "Oh my gosh, you really are poor." And I went, "That's why I can't go out with you guys. I don't have any money." 
because none of these guys who went to USC were, you know, poor, right? And yeah. uh, so they were like, they couldn't believe That's always the case. The people who have regular jobs forget what it's like to live, you know, from check to check and constantly budgeting. And yep. oh, okay. when you have a friend that understands that, I have a friend like that and that likes, he's a golf buddy. And he likes to golf in, you know, expensive resorts and all these places that I can't afford. And so he'll he'll invite me and I say, no, I can't go. And he says, that's OK. You know, I'll cover you because he knows I can't. He wants to golf with me, but he knows I can't afford it. Right. But he teases me always. Hey, yeah, let's go. <laughs> but the, but then he'll say, yeah, OK, I'll take care of it. So, you know, guys like that are. are and and this guy has money, so I don't know where how he understands that yeah. I don't. He's, He's changing his job. job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where to go? Schism, man, I don't get it. Mister David makes it look like a kid could do that art, and it's just freaking lines. My lines look like a fat pig getting roasted by roasted by water. This, what? I don't know what that means. A pig getting roasted by water. His look like a human face. <laughs> but you also, Schism, you're looking at David's overlay. He's, he's drawing on top of something. And so you're not really seeing, you're seeing all the layers all at once. It's it's kind of like when you watch Dan draw on uh, digitally where you're seeing layers of stuff. And then when he cleans it up, all the uh, extra lines go away. So, David, that was a compliment. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One more interesting compliment, I would say. Well, you know, a pig getting... And, and Faux Peasy says, that's true. Some of it looks so simple, but it's still high level. I don't see why everybody feels this need to be nice to David today. <laughs> don't be a hater. <laughs> It's because he's black. That's right. Well, at least we, let's, let's be honest. <clears throat> this is how so, they pay back their reparations, right? <laughs> Compliments. <laughs> I don't have any money, but I'll, I'll say some nice things to you. Yeah. Pretty good for a black guy. <laughs> an acre of land and compliments. <laughs> Pretty good for a black guy. You know, uh, uh, speaking of racism, I um, <laughs> what? I was uh, I was listening to this guy on the radio who's like a historian about uh, Native Americans, or as you know, some people refer as indigenous peoples and things like that, sort of dispelling myths and uh, and he, of course he was saying, which probably most of us would assume if we didn't outright know that he said this. He goes most of the um, well, he called Indians. He said he come in contact with. They have no problem with being called Indians. In fact, many of them prefer that. And uh, it's just the uh, the white woke that have attached this sort of stigma to it. So, but that was kind of interesting. Yeah, just like how they created Latinx. It's like who the heck? <laughs> no, yeah. Latinx. Yeah, what Latinx. does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand the the whole hatred of like the like the um, Indian teams, sports teams. Because I like when you say the Vikings, I'm like, yeah, cool. You know, like don't care. <laughs> you know, that's that's my heritage. I don't, you know, I like it. Like it's like a yeah, I we're badasses. You know? I think it's mostly white women that object to. It. <clears throat> yeah, it's stupid. Um, I was going to read Marcus's question where to go marcus killigrew is asking how was it working with layton i inked backgrounds on his uh hercules miniseries and oh wait a minute Herc oh oh you you talking about in marvel yeah hercules okay all right i was yeah. thinking and so i went in he was like really late and so he wanted me to go into the marvel office and work <laughs> there so I went into Marvel and he dumped a bunch of pages. 
on me and then took off for a, a convention that he was going to that weekend. <laughs> so that, that's why Bob was was late because he he did, he was messing around and not spending time at the drawing table. But Gary, you were there to bail. I out. was there. That's right. Uh, Trying to be a professional. G Money's here to rat him out today. Yep. <laughs> he seemed like a nice guy when he's interviewed. Is he, was he nice to, to work with? Um, he got mad at me because I didn't know how to do the fingerprint, uh, um, like smoke technique. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd never, I knew what it was, but no one had ever shown, showed me how to do it. And What's so I think it was technique? more for him taking the time to show me how to do it when he, yeah, because he was on his way to the convention and he had to, right. you know, yeah. so I could do it myself if I had. <laughs> exactly. He expected or, me to do it. Yep. Yeah, well, it is your job. Uh, so. so how many of you have used that technique? I don't I don't know what it is. I've yeah. never used it because I never think about I mean I've done it on accident before. but I Sean Murphy uses it probably more than anyone I can think of today. What is it? it really well. You just dab your finger in some drops of ink and then dab your your finger on the paper and your fingerprint creates this like real subtle layer of of lines so you could use it for like smoke or textures or you know mm -hmm. he uses it for textures he'll like he'll put it on faces and you know like on a character's nose and it gives that you know like a alcoholic look um, but a lot of like the old school inkers would use it for smoke and, and stuff like that. But it's a real subtle thing. And so the reproduction has to be pretty good to even see it. Cause you're just, you're just basically laying down your, your fingerprint on in ink. That's a good, good technique to know. Like if you make a mistake, you just be like, it's smoke. Yeah. <laughs> you put a fingerprint on your, on your drawing. You leave your fingerprint on there, though, then the cops can find you then. So. That's Could true. someone reverse engineer that fingerprint and get a full fingerprint and then put it on a crime scene? Yeah, look at it, man. There's an episode right there. The artist, uh, you know, gets victimized by uh, the killer, uh, gets set up by the killer, and then the CSI has to come in and figure it out. Mm -hmm. I like it. Got it half written already. <clears throat> I learned that from, I, I, I should say, I found out about it from Art to Bear. He's talking about it. And, you know, I kind of, I don't know that in terms of, you know, looking at it as a technique and saying, oh, this is how you do it. But because I understood exactly what he's talking about. I was just amazed. I go, I'd never even thought of that. It's like. Yeah, but that's like, that's an old, old technique that, that not, like I say, not that many people use today. But this, a lot of the, the stuff those old guys did with, um, it's, it's kind of gotten lost over the years. Yeah. But again, uh, Sean Murphy does does it really well. And he, he uses it a lot. Well, I didn't back his latest book because I'm not a big Zorro fan, which people find kind of interesting. I'm doing Wraith of God and I'm not a Zorro fan, but I'm just, I don't know. He wasn't superhero-y enough for me. The yeah. Cape and a costume. <laughs> oh, your mask. Yeah. Not superhero -y. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, I don't really know why I never really, maybe it was the mustache. I just never into it. I did well, like the movie, Basically, though. guys, you know, sword fighting, that's about all it was. <clears throat> I definitely and, and want to illustrate that. Fighting. Yeah, illustrate that in comics. It's, it's, um, it's not like, you know, punching somebody's, uh, spine up through their hat. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. That's a really good question because it's even as a kid, it was something I was like, eh. it's kind of like Tarzan. I never really got into Tarzan. It wasn't. No, I mean, like Conan sword fighting, they're, he's lopping mm -hmm. off right. you know, limbs. Right, uh, exactly. Or sword fighting is, ball. you know, like drawing letters on somebody's chest. You know what it was, and this is my problem with Tarzan too, is what it was too gr grounded in 
I mean, saying grounded in reality doesn't really make sense, but in the sense that they didn't really do, I mean, Tarzan would always like, there was, there was gorillas and lions and poachers and things like that, but there wasn't, um, at least the stuff that I read, and I, I read a ton of it, so. It but wasn't it was, exaggerated like like superhero mythology. Yeah, it wasn't like John Carter of Mars where the whole thing was just, you know, you take a, you take Tarzan and put him on Mars with a bunch of weird creatures, and now suddenly I'm interested, you know? Um, so that was my thing with Tarzan. It was just like, oh, he's a, you know, he's a dude in the jungle. Okay, so yeah, not, not, not enough opportunity for imagination. What's that? Not enough opportunity for imagination. Right. I mean, I get the adventure aspect of it, you know, but it's I mean, like... it could be now. It, I mean, as far as things could be pushed, especially in comics, you could do something that's closer to, you know, the Savage Land where he's dealing with, you know, King Kong and Godzilla type creatures right, well, that, right but that's that's sort of what kazar was right was he was like yeah. the he was tarzan but for marvel comics where you know, yeah. pushed him. so he tarzan could be that too now at this point yeah. yeah well there was some of that i mean you know was it uh simonson and lee weeks you guys saw that like in the 90s that miniseries it was uh tarzan um tarzan versus predator did you guys see that thing yeah there's mm -hmm. a predator Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Lee Weeks did the artwork for it and Simonson wrote it. It was awesome. Yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> they did a um didn't they do a well, Tarzan you, Superman you, book? I'm sorry, David. Didn't they do a Tarzan Superman book? Probably. Maybe. I was gonna ask uh, Aaron, would you would you read a, a Zorro versus Predator story? I would. I'd be more interested. It would depend on who drew it, but I'd be more interested in it. Yeah. Wouldn't Wouldn't he? How would he stand a chance? <laughs> how did Danny Glover stand a chance? <laughs> he could barely well, run. Yeah. How did that little girl in the the latest series stand a chance? Uh, Henry Jeremek is asking if I ever use Zipatone. David, is I have I ever used Zipatone? Yes. <laughs> Very I like out on inking some of David's early work, like you know, like crazy. I, I used it. I had a, a credo that I tried to use Zipatone at least one place on every page, at, <laughs> at least somewhere on every single page. That's how much I used it. And who taught me? I don't remember. I know Terry Austin used it a lot. Um, uh, Klaus Jensen used it very effectively. So did Tom Palmer. Um, is Terry Austin gone? Is he? Did he pass away? Or? No, no he's, he. Last I heard, he was inking Sonic. I don't, I don't know if he still is Sonic the Hedgehog. He was. He was. He was the regular inker on Sonic the Hedgehog for a long time when it was at Archie, and then it, when it went to IDW, I'm not sure. Help me out in the chat. I'm not sure if he continued to to uh, to ink Sonic at IDW. But that was, you know, a while ago. I, I don't know what he's been doing since. Yeah, Kevin Wolf, Bob Layton used uh, Zipatone a lot and 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 very well. It was very common back, you know, in the yeah the the four oh, color yeah. newsprint days because it because they couldn't do gray in color. It was it was always like a bluish looking color, right? And so a lot of times inkers would put zipatone down for textures or for a gray tone and like guys that inked um gene colon used it a lot because colon shaded with the side of his pencil and and how do you interpret that with ink line and so right. guys like klaus jensen and steve leolea and and uh um tom palmer use zipatone when they inked uh ernie ernie colon i'm gonna say ernie colon gene colon <laughs> Gary, now, what do you think of, of Palmer's you... things? I always loved them over and too much Rackham stuff. It, well, it depends. It would depend on who he's inking. Like him over John Basima and Gene Colon and I'm Neil Gene Adams. Colin. What do you think? What do you think of the team, Gene Colon uh, Palmer team on Tomb of Dracula, especially? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. Loved it. Great. Yeah. I mean, he. Yeah, he. That I feel like that amazing. was the best combo for him, like those two guys. Yeah. 
And his his thinking on on Neil Adams, Aaron. It's the best. I still think it's the best work, and it's so funny because it was so early in his career, but it's still, I think, the best work that Palmer's ever done. It was just, it was amazing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And you're like, how? I mean, Ink and Neil Adams would not have been an easy thing because his stuff was a lot looser than you might think, and Palmer was like really young, wasn't he, when he took on that job? I don't know. No, I don't think he was that young. It was it was early in his career. Um, I had a long conversation with him. He contributed to my inking book. And I had a long conversation with him over the phone. And and he had been working in advertising for a while before he okay. started doing comics. OK. And so he had a, an art career. And, and, and that's why he jumped in, you know, the deep end uh, so easily is because he had he had lots of experience in, in illustrating. Yeah, I, I, I just thought I, I, I still to this day think that the, that X Men stuff that um, he inked is the best Neil's ever looked. Yeah, I, I agree. But he got um, he got um, I don't know bolder, softer, something as he went along, and I didn't like his stuff as he much. got. Yeah, he got bolder as he. Uh, got older. Most, I think, most inkers tend to get bolder. Um, Terry Austin did. Klaus Jansen did. Tom Palmer did. They well, just, as you know, it's it's to do the kind of work like you're doing requires so much focus. Yeah, you know, and concentration to maintain that that super thin line quality, and it. I can see I can just become taxing and fatiguing after a while and you just don't want to do it anymore. Right. So you like, well, and that's, yeah. And, and I've noticed how inking styles change and, you know, from some of the guys that I admire and, and I kind of didn't like the direction they were going it, it, to me. There's, they were like cutting corners. I don't know if they were cutting corners for time issues or they just, because they're getting older, they just couldn't, couldn't finesse it like they used to. Right. So I've I've kind of made it a goal of mine not to go in that direction. And I'm actually getting more detailed as as the as the clock is ticking rather than less. I notice like if I'll looking at something that I did, you know, even a couple of years ago and compare it to what I'm doing now, what I'm doing now is is the lines are, are more delicate. Yeah, I made the same promise to myself, but it hasn't really worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, you're cranking out, cranking out pages. That's that's different than, than what I'm doing. Well, you so know, when you're, not, when you're 90, your your stuff's gonna be like in like you're gonna use a microscope. Yeah, you just right. You won't be able to see it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. That's what Art Adams is doing. He's getting yeah, more exactly. More. Art Adams is yeah. yeah. He's he's one of the few guys you can look at and say as his career goes along, his stuff is just getting crazier and crazier. It's not getting like simplified or anything. It's just getting more complicated. Or he's settled. I mean, I guess you could say he's settled into a style, uh, but it's like it's certainly not. Yeah, it's not like uh, Michael Golden as an example, where he's just simplifying his stuff and right. Yeah, still, yeah. Arthur is still bringing it, man. And I, I think Golden's the drawing is still there. It's still really solid, but he's just he's just using simpler techniques in his his inking style. Yeah, and another guy is uh, uh, Travis Sheray. The uh, his, his stuff is getting insanely detailed now. Yeah, yeah. Well, Travis never has done enough work volume wise that he could ever claim to be fatigued. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that that Baron uh, uh, blood. What, what, no, no, the what was it? The the Meta Baron stuff. Yeah, it's like enough to fill your a lifetime of. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of like work. But I think yeah, uh, past master. Thing. I think we're all getting slower. I I know I'm getting slower. Um, but I well, you, I know you, that's part of the part of the deal of getting older. If I want to maintain a, you know a certain look, that it it takes me longer to do it. I'm well, getting slower. <laughs> even as he speaks uh, uh, I found it um, well especially on this Kit Carter stuff now since I've, I've got Matt Ryan inking it that I have to go back to like really tight pencils which I haven't done I mean it used to, it used to just be routine for me 
at, um, you know, when I was working at Marvel in DC, that's just, how, you know, I was, I had figured out a way to do it in a timely fashion. And I could, now it's like, you know, I've done back to back issues. So basically two years of working on Wraith of God and other stuff, garbage man, where I'm doing, you know, I'm doing looser pencils. I still wouldn't say I'm, you know, I wouldn't, they're more than layouts, but looser. But you're, pencils. Yeah. You're not putting everything in when you're, when you're inking yourself. Right. You're, yeah. And then you go in and you do it with the inking, right? You do a ton of drawing with the inking. Yeah. And now I'm like, and the idea was to, to get Matt to do this was to, so I could get the book out fast. Oh, that's right. You have to save time. And then you're putting more time, more into, time the into the pencil. So you're like, I don't know. Am I really saving any time? But yeah. Uh, I well, think David, I David does the same thing when he inks himself. He doesn't, it's like the, the T jaw pages that I got that I was inking were like super tight. And he, do, he doesn't do that when he's inking himself. Well, someone needs to talk to him about it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jim, in the chat. I appreciate it. But it is it is interesting that how you can sort of, you know, you develop an approach to doing something, and then, you know, through necessity or whatever, you you change that approach, and then you have to go back, and it's like, wow, this is a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, I was just getting into a rhythm with Wraith of God that it was like, you know, I got all that cross etching and stuff, and it looks like it's it's hyper or super detailed and in a way it is, but <clears throat> I, I got into this kind of rhythm with doing it that way, and now I'm back to kind of doing things the way I was, did when I worked at DC and Marvel, and it's like it's taking me, you know, some time to sort of get back into that groove and figure that out. Well, they did the same thing with Brian Boland at DC when he was working on uh, Camelot 3000. Those were the days when I was going into the office and uh, Lynn Ween was giving me work at the time and Lynn was the editor on Camelot 3000. I was there uh, a couple of times when he got packages from Great Britain from, from Boland and it's like, ooh, artwork. Yeah, and that, the that came Bowling like 3000 stuff was cool. Yeah, like, the the, the, remember that one guy, like, one shot of the guy like holding or like, holding the chalice, he did all those straight lines mm -hmm. emanating, emanating from this. Uh, yeah, chalice yeah, Bolin, like, Bolin oh, inked uh, the covers, but uh, he didn't ink the interiors, and and that was the trying to keep Bolin on a schedule was the reason why. Um, they didn't have him ink it, but he was doing what you were talking about, Aaron. He was making the pencil so tight. He was drawing all the feathering and he was filling in the blacks and he was doing all the stuff that he got really late on. I mean, he was like months behind. Right. And that was all because he wasn't crazy about what the inkers were doing. And so he was trying to, you know, basically he was inking it with his pencil. Right, making sure it was the purpose of him not inking it. it you should have right. just let him, let him ink it. It would have kept the same schedule. Because that was that was originally Bruce Patterson, right? That was inking right. that. But then, uh, did someone else take over later? I can't remember. Uh, Bruce Patterson. They did this big, you know, competition, and and they chose uh, Patterson, and he inked a few issues. I don't remember how many, and and Bolin really wasn't crazy about it, and so. Um, Dick Giordano, I think, I think inked one issue. I could be wrong. And then Terry Austin, uh, yeah, the chat is correct. Terry Austin finished the series. And Terry Austin's style at that time, it wasn't his X Men style, where he was like doing all these little tiny lines, and it was he started to get bolder. Yeah. And so it was, it was an, it still looked cool, but it wasn't, it didn't look like Boland. And I don't know. Um, I've heard in interviews or read, I can't remember heard or read Boland praising what Terry did, but it was, it was different than what Boland would have done himself. Well, that was kind of the interesting thing about it because you could, I remember 
getting it, and I wasn't all that familiar with Brian's stuff other than I'd seen some Judge Dredd and whatever, but um, it looked like Boland, and yet it didn't look like Boland, you know? Right, right. And that's why I thought The Killing Joke was just blew my mind, because that to me is sort of like, that was Boland just, okay, this is going to be my opus, and, you know, and he just, that <laughs> that was just amazing. Yeah. But just to be in, in Lynn's office and, and uh, you know, in my holding in my greasy mitts, <laughs> original bowl and artwork. And, and there's, you know, every once in a while, I, I'd get to look at a, a cover and, and see his inks up close. And they were, yeah, you're right, Dan. They were just mind blowing. You know, one of my favorite uh, Judge Dredd covers, I don't know if you guys remember, it's it was a, uh, called Child Quest and it had this gray guy with all these uh spikes coming out of him and it was just insane detail on on this creature and and, and he's holding the judge is holding this piece of paper and the, this giant monster's going nah haven't seen him <laughs> that's all he's saying on the cover it was the coolest thing though i yeah. don't know if you guys that you recall that i do remember that yeah that's yeah those cover. were oh, that eagle comic stuff right the judge yeah. stuff that he was doing for the, the british publisher mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a lot of those. Uh, that 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 dread stuff was weird and totally fun. Huge monster sitting there. And... Faux Peasy is asking, has David ever drawn Cyberfrog? Yeah. Uh, yes. Did a trading card. Trading card. Faux Peasy. <clears throat> Might do some more in the future. Who knows? I've tried drawing. It's it's a tough character to do, man. I know. That's why I've kind of avoided it. I'm just like, God, there's a lot of stuff going on there, man. I'm going to screw you want, up. You want to find out how good artist uh, Ethan is? Try drawing Cyberfrog. Yeah. Find out real <laughs> yeah. fast. Panel to panel, not just drawing it once. Right. Draw them all <laughs> the time. Yeah. Um, Skullnasher is uh, asking, doesn't Pitt have chains on, on his arms? Yeah, I just realized that, and I'm a little pissed at myself that I got ahead of myself inking here, and I went, wait a minute. You know how you could fix that, right? Yeah, it's called whiteout. No, just do them in black. Yeah, yeah make the change it, black. Make the change black and then hit it with whiteout little highlights. Yeah, for the highlight. Oh, okay. Yeah, look at that. You just you guys supposed to tell me that off screen so I look like a genius and nothing. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got to we gotta learn you, son. Public yeah, no, we're not going <laughs> to. We're not going to. Make you look like a genius. That's what you. No, I guess it's true. Uh, Brian Ballin called me uh, when I first lived out here in uh, New Mexico, and I was working on uh, the Prince comic. And he called just to. He called some editor to find out who was doing the art because he saw it and he wanted to contact me just to tell me how much he liked it. Oh, that's kind of cool. And dude, I turned into like. Chris Farley from SNL. He said, hey, you yeah. know when you did that thing? <laughs> that was so <laughs> cool. <laughs> I was going through his whole excellent. catalog. Yeah, he wanted to be like, you know, you know, I respect you as an artist. And I was just like, total fanboy. I, I lost it. <laughs> and I was just like, Brian Ballin called me. <laughs> well, that's cool that you take the time to do that. I mean, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, that's how nice a person like he is. I mean, it's never happened to me, but I'm just saying if they did, I would really. <laughs> it was cool for you. <laughs> All right. They, they usually call that. They usually call to get my number so they can ask me to be taken off the book. Is usually <laughs> <laughs> what are you leaving? Yeah, we're What's like that? certainly going to be. Hey, Aaron, you, right? we got your phone number because we want to know what anchor you had on that sludge. <laughs> right, oh, Gary Martin. <laughs> That's right. Oh, that made you look good. Okay. Yeah. Coming from Wrightson, that that was. Uh, oh, shut up. That was. Uh, <laughs> it, it's still a fond memory for me and a bitter memory for Aaron. Oh, <laughs> tragedy. Okay, I'll change the subject. <laughs> no, you know what? There was also I don't know if you remember this or not, but there was a magazine article on one of those because back in, during that period of time, there was a ton of like wizard imitators and everybody was doing like comic magazines comic news and all this kind of stuff and there was a review 
on sludge and um you know they're talking about the stories and blah 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 and they had a little blurb saying yeah the, the art's really they, they said the art's really good but they said the and this is like this is almost a quote it said um but the real star is the anchor gary martin and so are you I, serious I, yeah i was like curse you martin and um yeah I, did, I took a lot of abuse back in the day. So, Aaron, I don't remember that. So you you held that from me all these no, years? No, no, no. We were – you probably don't remember, but we were at San Diego, and actually we read that, and I we, – <laughs> you were uh, – you got kind of a kick out of it, and I was like – I don't oh, remember that at all. I, I remember I was telling you. I was like, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, all right. Uh, there's something I've been wanting to read. This is, uh, I pulled this off the uh, internet. Apparently, this is a synopsis of the movie Alien from a Hong Kong bootleg DVD. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. All right. It's, uh, hold on a second. Let me read the whole thing. Spaceship people get up from sleeping coffin and have eat. <laughs> <laughs> Computer woman, like it's a fire. Yeah, this is a synopsis of the whole of the whole story. Oh, the whole thing. Computer woman finds strange noiselings <laughs> on, on planet, and astronauts Wait, go to scene. I gotta stop inking. <laughs> astronauts find big elephant man who dead, then find too many egg. <laughs> Astronaut is possessed by egg demon and new egg demon is come when eat bad noodle <laughs> <laughs> no it's bad it's bad noodle <laughs> oh so they think the noodle caused the egg demon to come <laughs> wouldn't like um, google translate do a better job of it uh, oh, seven dude. friends and i can almost follow it trying to find egg demon before spaceship go home but is hard working. <laughs> Sounds like turns a life to escaping. Who is bad milk blood robot? <laughs> Cream not working because space make deaf. <laughs> so bad milk blood robot could be the name of a of a bear. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad that's got, that's got potential. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh my goodness. So you're in a video store in uh was that Chinese or Japanese? Korean. Korean. Okay, so yeah. Korean. And you're in the Korean movie store going, should we get this? What do you think? Yeah. We get this? <laughs> get it just for that alone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bad bad milk blood robot those are the worst kind too that's right you know? the good blood milk <laughs> you can't milk even say blood good milk blooded uh, yeah. mm. yeah, i didn't really think about it. he is pretty milky isn't he yeah, yeah. Well, yeah the, the noodles everything he ate was sitting in there you know it's a robot Spam says a new kit carter villain milk blood robot <laughs> i can feel that oh <clears throat> Why not? God, that's funny. I always, I always wondered why. I guess I figured out now, but I, you know, like, not all the time, but a lot of times in some of these movies, they, the uh, movie poster artwork is always different in the you know the international versions. And oftentimes the artwork is like way better on the international. I think it's because they take license, right? They they do whatever they want, <clears throat> not necessarily <throat> depicting what's happening in the film. But there was like, but sometimes just the the uh, you know not always. Of course, there's some really good American artists, obviously. But like there was a Rambo poster I remember seeing that was international. I was like, man, this is great. Like, why did they use this? And of course, you know, I've, I've complained about this before is that they used the, the Bob Peak artwork on um, Star Trek II for the international version, not the US release. Mm. The US release was that ugly photo collage 
It was like, why are they not using oh, yeah, yeah. You know? It makes Wizard, me please. Hey, Ron, I finally got to back your books. That's good. 11 <laughs> upcoming woot. I don't understand what that is. Hey, hey, Ron, I finally got to back your books. 11 upcoming woot. <laughs> Thank you, Wood Wizard Sleeves. I appreciate it. If you're oh, I really, that, uh, Aaron, that know. that uh, garbage man story turned out so great. It looks so. Oh, fun. did you read? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, mean, I, did, I didn't read. It. I just I, I, yeah. I, I looked through it. I was like, oh my gosh, it turned out just as good as I was hoping. You know. Yeah, it really looks. It really. Looks it's good. definitely it's got the rights and feel. Yeah. yeah, doesn't it? You feel like I, you're reading. Every you, time I I think of that story, I have to, I go back to your opening. Zed uh, splash page, or is it Jed? Oh, Night of Living Jed. Jed, yeah. I yeah. I just absolutely love that page. Yeah, oh. I do too. I, well, that's the funny thing is, remember when I when I I was on the show and I, I saw that stuff and I said, <clears throat> "Man, I want to color it" because I knew I knew as soon as I saw it that that this thing could be colored that way, and it was just so much fun that it worked out the way I hoped it did, you know. Well, it really, the coloring really reminds, especially the latter half of the book, really, you, you it kind of feels like you're reading that, um, the Hanover Fritz and heavy metal, uh, story. Yeah, it's, it's, Fritz. I mean, it's the coloring is, is really, uh, just, it's from that print where he has that Hanover fist stealing chickens. From yeah, gentleman's from the, uh, gentleman's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a great, great, uh, color treatment. And I thought that's, yeah. you know, I, I was so inspired by that for sure. Yeah, and it really, it really came across. I mean, I, I just, it made it, it warmed my heart when I was looking at that. And it just, you know, uh, I felt like I, I have successfully riffed Wrightson in this story, on all levels. You know, the colors there now, and um, it just really, I kind of felt. There's a couple of panels I point them out, but I don't want to spoil for people who haven't read it yet. But when we go down the line, I'll I'll uh, I'll bring out a, a couple of pages where you look at, it, and I'll point out some rightsonisms in those panels. And we'll go, oh my gosh, yeah, if you haven't already. Um, uh, Jim Alaska, a little late. He's asking, where's Kelsey? <laughs> right here. Is Kelsey not here? How's it going, what? guys? How's, how's it going? Hey, hey, guys. hey what's going on? <laughs> I'm telling you, I am Kelsey. Yeah, uh, Dan, how's your Edward G. Robinson uh, impersonation? Yeah. Yeah, see. By the way, no one's uh, commented on my uh, turbulence free uh, 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 camera this time. That's true. <laughs> That's wonderful, Dan. I got the shakes. I had the shakes and I took them out. Mine does that too because it's attached to the table, which is a stupid thing, right? Well, that's why, that's why mine isn't shaking anymore. I took it, I detached it from the table. Yeah, yeah I was. I'm sitting here going every time I do like a little scribble effect or erase the camera's like you know, you know like, hmm, that's probably not the best one. Random task says Dan has that soothing NPR voice. <laughs> Did you have to say NPR? <laughs> you know, I, I like the Bob Ross connection. That, that's great. No, you do. You have that sort of I try to watch your videos, but I keep falling asleep like five minutes in. <laughs> yeah, having trouble falling asleep? Try my okay. videos. That's right. Now we're going to put this layer down. You're like, <laughs> oh. hidden it's hand good. media. Every, every once in a while, my head just slams into the drawing table. <laughs> <laughs> I put myself to sleep. <laughs> that adds to the value of the work, or it has an impression of your face. Yeah, on the original. And there's a star scene, and you're yeah, drifting. Talk about that, like drifting. the ink smear with your thumb. You just do it with your face, right? Right. Uh, Hidden Hand Media wants to know how. Oh, I'm sorry, it's scrolling. Ask David how he's how he learned how to draw such good hands. We well, must see um, my hand. How to draw hands video? That's one. Yeah, he watched. He, he watched. Yeah, he watched hands video. Hands. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna plug my uh, do a commercial every five seconds. Hey, have you seen that? Yeah, you should. I learned it from watching uh, '70s Palm Olive commercials. No, just kidding. <laughs> just watch it. Yeah. Relax, <laughs> uh, it's Palm Olive. No, all of the the guys like Busema and 
I, I would actually even judge artists by how well they would draw hands and stuff. And I was like, oh man, you can such great hands. And, you know, Michael Golden, Arthur Adams, you know, the usual suspects, Alex Toth. <clears throat> they all did really great hands. And for Zeta, and, for Zeta. Because Zeta, they're yeah. actors. Hands are actors. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I tell you, for Zeta had some great hands. In it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I hate everything presented did had that sort of um, sort of he, he was able to bring like a certain level of realism to what he was doing, even though it was clearly not, you know, but just the that sort of, you know, soft sort of bumpy Bridgman esque, you know, uh, quality to his figure work. And we've talked about it on the show before. That's why guys like Frazetta or Schultz or guys in that sort of vein, uh, they didn't they didn't do great superheroes because it, that style is more it's more built for science fiction adventure fantasy type stuff and doesn't really translate into what we're used to seeing a more bolder stronger uh, superhero line right yeah like uh, even his his pit when he did pit it was it was good but. It was kind of doughy and it didn't really, it didn't, it, it lacked the guy. It had that illustrative quality, but it lacked the sort of energy and stuff that you, you yeah, want. The, well, of course, Dale Keelan's over the top with his energy. So that's true. No, not, you know, one's going to match that, you know. But it um, is. The critique I got from Neil Adams on that Terry Austin trip when he took me to uh, Continuity Studios, one of the things that he told me, and of course, he was, um, almost stoned on painkillers at the time. But he told me the the two most important things that uh, you should pay attention to as an inker are faces and hands. So those are the two things that readers look at the most. Yeah. And I, I, you know, obviously I knew about the faces, but I hadn't thought about the hands part and he's, you know, absolutely right. And so you like, Started looking at Neil Adams' hands after that, and yeah, Neil was a great hands. Hands are so that. expressive; they're, they're, they they tell so much story too. Yeah. So well, I think them, boy, you got to really think about it. People don't pay attention to hands unless you jack them up, and then they're like they can become super noticeable, right? Uh, faces are. I agree with that totally. I don't, you know, if the face isn't working for me, it doesn't matter how cool the rest of the body is. Or the figure work is, or the pose, or anything else. I mean, if faces. That's how I judge artists, is by how good they do faces. And if and if, yeah, if you can do a good face, then, then too you can almost the, the body parts can almost be not so hot. Right, the face can hold exactly it. Exactly right, because no one's really looking at uh, the figure work necessarily. Or if you, you know, you're taking liberties and exaggerating stuff. Um, but if you do a really cool looking face, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, and I, I always put detail or more time in my early work and stuff that I wanted to draw. You know, like I'd get a critique and somebody'd say, Yeah, that your your facial proportions are all wonky. And I'd say, Yeah, but what about that gun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, they've never noticed it, right? Because the uh you didn't get past the face. Right. And uh spent more time on the gun than on the face. Loomis had a great quote. I read it. I can't remember which one of his books. It might have been Creative Illustration, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, that he said that he basically drew a face a day, you know? Mm. And I did that for a long time. I, you know, I would be like, you know, sit in front of the TV and I would like, oh, I'm going to draw, you know, I'd pull up a picture of, uh, you know, say Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. And I'd sit there and just kind of do like a sketch portrait of that. You know, I'm sitting there, you know, listening to TV or whatever with the kids, and and it's a great way to get a to get a good handle on uh, facial anatomy. Yeah, I, I still do that. I have a sketchbook uh, on my nightstand, and when I'm watching films, I see like a great uh, shadow on someone's face. I'll pause it and and draw it. It's like a old, untouchable episodes. The lighting on that was masterful. It's, right. Yeah. Those, you know, those guys really knew what they were doing. It wasn't, it wasn't by accident. They really knew what they were doing. Well, it's interesting. If you take a look at, uh, I'm sure most of you guys have seen this. It writes in, when he was working on Frankenstein, he actually did a clay 
uh, bust. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a Frankenstein that he could light, you know, and take a look at the different shadow effects and how it would that work. that that explains that then that's why that stuff was so cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing that that bust. It was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For uh, bit of that too, you know, sculpting. And you're just like, is there anything you can't do? You know, it's just like, yeah. yeah. Speaking of Wrightson, uh, Aaron, you have a super chat. Well, we'll be the judge of that. Uh, let's see. Son of Liberty Radio for five dollars. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that very much. Says Gary, you ain't Wrightson. What did he say about? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say about Aaron's art? Did he know you were leaving him to ink? Did you know you were leaving him to ink Aaron? Did he tell you to say hello to Shelly? Now, you never actually were right, then, right? <laughs> Son of Liberty Radio. Get your facts straight, man. You're just like, I should put you on one of my cryptid videos. This is so jacked up. Uh, oh, look at that. What is that? Dan Lawless. That's what I'm talking to you, Dan. Where this is great. That? I wanted to show you know this. I I did, when I did how to draw heads thing. I, I said get this guys. This is. I wish they had this when I was younger. Where it's a great you sculpt, these? you know. And you can you, know, you, you when you're trying to draw these. I, I got to get in my, Damn. When you're trying to get these weird angles and stuff of a face. Man, it's so helpful, you know. And you can put the shadows of the face on it too. Is that Chris Evans? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Where'd you guys get that? Amazon, like thirty bucks. Just like. Chris Evans' head, that's what you search? You put in uh, male face at, and... and uh, yeah, they have bunch. tons of celebrities, tons. And, and they're because, like one six scale. And they oh sculpt them perfectly, yeah. that you guys. Like, I know, those are so great. When you're yeah. trying to are those get from good, the Hot Toys or something like that? Yeah, yeah. When, when you're trying to get now, a difficult angle... There's a bunch of gosh. a bunch of different manufacturers, but yeah. they, there's there's a ton of that kind of stuff out there. Yep. Now, Gary, so you, didn't, you didn't actually ever ink rights. And you've only inked recreations of <laughs> 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 well, no, I'm trying. No, I'm clarifying this for Son of Liberty Radio. Well, the story we're telling is Gary was inking me, and we showed the the uh, inks to right. Trying to clarify it for yourself. And uh, <laughs> no, and Wrightson was like, "God, this inking is fantastic. Did you do it?" And he was asking me. I said, "No, Gary did." And then he just talked to Gary the whole time, telling him how great his inking was. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so there, Son of Liberty Radio. Did he turn his back to you when he was talking to Gary? Like. Did he what? That shit. Did he turn awesome. his back to you? Like, just no. like... <laughs> if he was sitting at the, if he, he was sitting at the table, if he was standing, he probably would have. Wow. Kind of like, excuse me, so... what are you doing here? I need to talk to Gary. I'm like, uh, okay, thank you, sir. And if... Do you mind? Get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you, Aaron, that's Aaron why you did the whole uh, rights and uh, garbage man story that, because you wanted to say, "I conquered you, buddy." Finally, that's there. right. Like. Take this. Yeah, I can do. I can do that, Arp. That's right. I don't need to take this. As I take this <laughs> art style from you, dead man. <laughs> well, that's the that's the typical thing about you know whenever you uh, you create a scenario in your head or something, it always goes the complete opposite. Like oh, I'm gonna meet Wrightson and he's gonna tell me how great I am and blah 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 and you just get humiliated and you're like I'm gonna quit you know piecing together my future because I clearly have no control over it <laughs> I think I do but I do not I wonder if I wonder if Wrightson ever did a story where someone was copying his style after he's passed away and he comes out of the grave <laughs> oh I should do that my style that. <laughs> No, I'll do that, and I'll like he'll come after me, but then he won't know who I am, so I'll send him to Gary, and then <laughs> yeah, he'll, like, there you go. <laughs> he'll drag Gary into the grave with him, and I'll be safe because he never he didn't recognize him. That's me. right, he didn't know who Aaron was, yep. even though Aaron met him several times, several times, had dinner with him twice. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> tragic story, really. And is. you would be. <laughs> yeah, we just had you know dinner last week. What? Yeah, forget it. Yeah, I'm always say, you say that memorable. I'm, I'm always thankful for guys that remember me, like uh, Walter Simonson. So far, still remembers me. Random task says all of Gary's uh, meeting and artist stories seem to go well. What's wrong with Aaron? 
<laughs> no, no, there's some sort of character fly in me that uh, I, I I can't quite put my finger on that's keeping these people from uh, remembering me. Well, you you got to either say something or spill coffee on them or something, you know. Well, I pissed rights and off once, but it still didn't help. It didn't work. That, yeah, please tell work. that story again. I always get a kick out of it. He should have pissed on rights and, and then he would have remembered you. <laughs> then he would have remembered you. You didn't remember me. Remember this. <laughs> I was I was actually sitting next to him at a show in Seattle, and um, one of those Steve Miner shows. You know the ones, Gary. Mm -hmm. You never went to those. No, I I okay. only went to two Seattle shows, and I hated. I hated being there both times, and so that that was. I vowed never to return. Uh, yeah, that sense. Well, ever since the uh, that uh, summer of love in Seattle, I said I'm never going back to Seattle for a show, and I haven't. Um, so I'm sitting next to him. Now, granted, I had my banner up with my name on it, right? <laughs> so yeah. he, you know, he was like. You know, he'd say hi to me while we were there at the show, and you know, oh, I'm sitting next to Earl Bruce, you know that kind of thing, and and uh, but only be, you know he had my banner there to help him, and uh, so <laughs> this guy comes up and he goes, asks him to do a sketch. He goes, yeah, sure, I'll do a sketch for you, and I'm looking seriously, I'm looking at this upside down from my vantage point while he was drawing it, and he did this thing that kind of looked like a bat at first, and I was like. You know, we're all sort of looking to see, uh, you know, what, what he was drawing, right? And he got about just a third of the way through, and I, I, I it dawned on me what he was drawing. And I, I blurted it out. I went, oh, my gosh, that's Frankenstein. And he, <laughs> if looks could kill, because I, like, ruined the surprise for this guy. You know, I just was like, because uh, we we're all just, like, sitting there watching him, you know, developed this thing. and it was like it wasn't like oh he drew the oval you know for the head and then he he was starting with the brow mm. of frankenstein and some shading and it looked like a like a bat or something it was really weird and we couldn't figure out what he's drawing and then and then i got it you know and i just blurted it out you thought you'd uh, move to the head of the class and it's <laughs> right he no, I, know, I, know. Now, I know rights and so well i can peg this before he even gets a third of the way done with it and he yeah he wasn't too happy with me did he grab you by your ear and take you out the room? Like no, he just gave me one of those scowling looks, like, and I was like, "Oh, sorry," you know. And then it was like, "I guess I, maybe I'll go talk to Blue." <laughs> uh, Aaron, you have another super chat. It must be super chat day. Well, it could be pity. Uh, let's see here. Zade Comics Press. That's Phil Diaz for five dollars. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate it very much. Wraith is waiting for me at home. Excited to read it this weekend. I forgot. I forgive for not drawing a Zade Comics character tonight, A.A. Eh, Ron. Kelsey would have. Uh, that's true. Or I might have talked to him to draw on Kit Carter so I could put it in my uh, my gallery. Uh, but thank you for that, uh, Bill. Um, well, that's a that's a character I wouldn't mind drawing. Again, is that Vane character from uh, of, of Zade's, man. That character is really cool. Oh yeah, he's got that one that that yeah that sort of biker looking dude. He's a, he's a devil. He's a de the devil's bounty hunter. So like I guess yeah. people, souls that try to escape from from hell, it's his job to go track them down. And sometimes they're on Earth and stuff. And it's just really cool. That character's got a ton of potential. I yeah. noticed on uh, Twitter, like after the poll results results from this week were were kind of obvious that there were a lot of guys that were. Um, leaning toward getting you to draw their characters mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a lot of that draw my character draw my character well thankfully i was uh, not watching any of that because i was uh fulfilling so uh i i just i was going to draw shank in honor of kelsey and then when he decided not to show up i said well i'm not drawing it then <laughs> So I had to go to, uh, I went to Pitt. I think a timely donation to, to a campaign made of influence. Though. 
Aaron, but apparently that didn't happen. Yeah, well, not not one that I recognize. That's the thing. It's like you go, oh, Aaron, I just you know, just backed your campaign, draw my character. You know that you know that might have worked actually. You could be bought. In other words, I guess we can all be bought, basically. That's what I was well, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> We're all dirty horse. To a certain degree. I like to think of myself as a clean horse. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, some of us bathe daily. <laughs> Everyone has their price. Mine is $300 illustration. <laughs> <laughs> mine mine pay for me to be dirty, so. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, David gets paid more than $300. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you guys hear the helicopter? Are they coming to get you, Ralph Phillips? <laughs> well, they're sending the whole military that they got it because they know how badass I am, you know. <laughs> Damn. They gotta, send, they gotta send Apache to take me out, man. <laughs> so, Aaron, what is the time situation? I would say 12 minutes. Give oh, 12 minutes. man. I gotta kick it up a notch. Why don't I pick this character with the this, uh, John's character with all these, these Iron Man ribs in him? Yeah. Be done in, I'd already be done. You've got to. Uh... You gotta suffer for your art. That's right. Well, well, you spent 15 minutes setting up. That's true. Oh yeah, that's why I get I get a buffer zone. That's cool. Yeah. But you're you're doing actual artwork instead of that, you know. Well, we don't have to be upstaged by color today either. There's no color pressure here today. Kel Kelsey's skipping out. Who's following their nails? That's Dave. If, it, if there's weird noises coming, it's from David. <laughs> He's trying to get that, that link off of his, his, the handcuffed office. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I keep switching tools. Oh, can't make up my mind. You know these big characters, these monster characters that have sort of like long nails or talon-like uh, nails. You wonder when they're fighting, they've got to be breaking those nails all the time, right? And punching through brick walls and stuff. Or maybe their nails. Maybe are they have like you know how they, the girls have those those things they put in their nails to strengthen them. Maybe they have like that for superheroes. Well, I'm just wondering. Maybe their nails are super powered too, like the rest. You know. I remember when I was a kid reading a uh, Dick Tracy Sunday uh, comic strip, and it was telling the origin of some villain. You remember Dick Tracy's villains were, were crazy. He had the best rogues gallery of villains. Yeah. yeah, and it was telling the story of some villain that had long fingernails and he used them as a, a weapon. And he was explaining that, you know, not only do I allow my nails to go long, but I also allow them to grow thick. And I still think about that even today. How do you allow your nails to grow thick? Well, <laughs> you're super powered. Uh, you know, maybe you have control over that stuff. Okay, I had not considered that. Problem solved. I should have brought yeah. this up a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Gary, Dr. Spell. I can out. sleep soundly tonight. <laughs> but I'm serious. Every once in a while, I'll think about that. How do you make your nails grow thick? Yeah. Do you have any more lingering questions for Aaron? Actually, people in the chat, uh, what have any uh, questions you've always wanted to know about? That we will not answer. No, Aaron <laughs> will Aaron answer. Also, he'll tell you anything you want to hear. Just ask him. I almost went and saw Treasure of the Sierra Madre last night. But... Oh, I love that movie. I opted to package more books. It seemed like the responsible thing to do. You didn't have. You only had five dollars in your uh, in your checkbook. <laughs> That's right. It was like Gary. I wanted to go see the movie, but I couldn't afford it. So I thought, oh, just bag more books. What are the Man, favorite lines? You really are poor. 
favorite lines in that from that movie, Randy Emberlin and I used to say that all the time when we'd go to the San Diego Comic Con. You're old. You don't need money. I'm young, and I need dough and plenty of it. <laughs> so we Fine. walk around saying, we need dough and plenty of it. <laughs> well, that's something that never changes, right? We need dough and we need plenty of it. It's been ages since I've seen that movie, and every we got this like I bring up this local theater we have here, that uh, the Joy Theater, that like constantly is showing like old movies, and it's great. Like it, it ticks me off when I can't go see them all, you know. But uh, speaking of sometimes... old movies, did you, ever, did you ever see the Third Man? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, Joseph Cotton and Orson Joseph Welles. Cotton, yeah. That's the only movie I've ever seen with Joseph Cotton that I liked him in the role. Joseph yeah, Cotton, who, who, I, I, this is Orson Welles was the lead. Who, who is that a guy in it? No, Orson Welles was the bad guy, but he wasn't the lead. Yeah. Joseph Cotton was the lead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Well. Yeah, um, it was uh, uh, Orson, Orson Welles played Harry Lime, right? Mm -hmm. Or Lime? Yeah. How do you yeah. pronounce it? Was it Lime? Lime, I think. Yeah. I just like the music, and it's really weird, like oh, yeah. Yeah. funky. How they put that together. And that was not Orson Welles was just an actor in that, right? He did not direct that. Right. That correct? You think it's true that that story where the, he hired an ambulance to get from one studio to another because he wanted to? Uh, I heard that. To uh, get hired, and he found out he, he couldn't get through the cabs, but the, with the cab service. But he found out it was legal to have an ambulance, and he just hired an ambulance, and they blew through traffic. Really? <laughs> he got to the studios to, to do is get more, make more money. You know? Oh my god! He just buy an ambulance. Well, maybe he did, but. Well, you probably have to be like on an official run, right? I mean. Well, how would how would anyone know you weren't? That's true. That's what Cops I'm saying. Cops aren't exactly going to pull over an ambulance but, when they're. In the... Like you said, he said it. He found out it wasn't illegal. You couldn't, you know, not. Uh, random not task. That. That's the other, other great line in, in uh, Sierra Madre. Badges. We don't need no stinking no badges. badges. Yeah, and everybody. I used to think that was from the Wild Bunch, but it wasn't. Funny how some of these uh, these quotations you get them in your mind and you think they're from one thing and they're not. Badgers, we don't need no stinking badgers. <clears throat> that was uh, John Houston directing his uh, his dad Walter Houston. I don't think it was his first movie, though. Was I didn't it? know that was his, his dad. Yeah, Walter Houston was John Houston's dad. Hmm. It wasn't his first rodeo, is it? Is it? No, I said I, I. It was an early movie. I don't think it was his first, but maybe it, as a director, I don't know. Maybe it was. Someone in the chat would surely know this. Don't call me surely. And wasn't he the guy that that? Uh... He played a cameo where Humphrey Bogart kept asking him for money. Could you spare a dime for a cup of coffee? He asked him like three or four times. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that that, that scene got uh, parodied, parodied in uh, the Chuck Jones cartoon, Eight Ball yeah. Bunny? Yeah. Where he comes up to Bugs Bunny, he's like, mm -hmm. pardon me, can you spell out a right. dime for an Amer American who's down on his luck? He'd go flipping the court and he'd go hit the road. Yeah, you get yeah, get lost. <laughs> and blazing random tasks, yeah, blazing saddles used it too. It's funny. I know most of my pop culture knowledge comes from Bugs Bunny cartoons. Bugs Bunny was great, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a smart ass. I mean, they don't even show those anywhere anymore do they it's a shame Probably i consider I, too racist or something 
Well, they were too violent when we were kids, and now they're offensive, and, you know, it's just like, whatever. I bought the DVDs of that stuff, and I actually got some of the, um, I don't know if they still put them out with the war cartoons, like some of the anti-Nazi propaganda ones that have, like, Hitler in them and stuff. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty funny stuff. I never really understood sort of the ban on those things because it's like, well, they're portraying Hitler as a, you know, a villain. Yeah, to make so it a joke. That? Yeah, it's like, why is this such a big deal? That, I mean, that was the uh, purpose of him from at the time was to work right. and make fun of. So it's like, because yeah. you're not supposed to mention Baba Yaga because he'll appear. Oh. All right, here's a question for you guys. Have you ever seen, and this is a, some sort of 60s, early 60s, uh, I don't even want to call it a horror film because it's more of just a weird film, but kind of supposed to be that sort of low-budget um, horror film of the time. It's called Carnival of Souls. Have you ever seen that? It sounds familiar. Looks like Night of the Living Dead, but... Uh, in terms oh, of does it have this clown with the white face where the guy has black lipstick or something like that? Well, there's everybody's like, she, this chick gets in this car accident and comes out of the drink, right? And then she starts seeing, um, like these pasty white faced, you know, like I said, black lipped, kind of dark eyed, like zombie type characters walking around. And she goes and sees a, you know, like the psychiatrist, and uh, it's just, it's in a way, it's weird and tedious, but it's also sort of strangely fascinating. And uh, not familiar. I'd never seen it before, but it was on. I've heard of it, but I'd never seen it. And it was on American Movie Classics. I don't know, a couple of weeks, probably mm -hmm. around Halloween, and. Uh, it was kind of like a supposed to be one of those you know low budget horror films from that period of time. Like, like Coppola's first film was um, uh, what was it? It was kind of a axe murderer haunted thing story, but it wasn't. It was more of a psychological thriller horror than something that was really genuinely scary. Uh, Dementia Thirteen. That was like Coppola's first film, and. But it was it was kind of in the same vein. It was almost like it was a this kind of subgenre to horror films, these low budget films where they really couldn't do anything too horrifying because they, they couldn't they didn't have the budget for monsters or whatever, right? So they do these kind of just bizarre, weird, low budget psychological films. And uh, this was certainly fit into that vein. Um, like yeah, we only have about mm -hmm. eight minutes, uh, so I would advise you to stop talking with your hands. Um, I control the clock. I'm <laughs> like the, it's like the outer limits. I you control, control the, the horizontal. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, Lady Celtic Moon says, Aaron got my Blood Hunters today. Have not read them yet, but she did get them. Well, I my, deliver, we deliver here. My and homie you. and personal rival, L.E. Comics, Mick Comicsgate says, got my Wraith of God, of God bundle. It came with a note, quote, help. My son has me trapped in the basement and won't let me leave until I ship <laughs> all these books. <laughs> I do sneak out uh, calls for help every once in a while to people, and hopefully they'll respond. And uh... That's her mother. Yeah, yeah, no, like, yeah, that's oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that was uh, she's not in the basement. Okay, I make sure that the it's uh, that she gets at least room temperature to work in. No, I'll tell you, 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 is, you want dinner, Curry's, uh, joined us, so we have to clean it up. Who joined? Yeah, I've been good, Angela. Um, Angela Curry. She wants oh, to know that. who everybody is drawing. I'm drawing the Wraith. Uh, David is drawing uh, Esther, and Dan is drawing. Um, Professor, you're not Blood. drawing Wraith. You're drawing the Pit. He got them all wrong. Yeah, it's 
Oh. Party hard <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, was like, what? Yeah, what are you doing? What? No, I was going to say, my mom just got, like, cancer surgery, like, two days ago to remove, like, this big old thing on her leg. And she's like... What was it, like, uh, packaging tape? What? (laughs) (laughs) That was actually a cancerous tumor, smart guy. And um, so... You get it from uh, cardboard in my life. Packing and wrapping. <laughs> That's the, right. It's very cancerous. Paper. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was that episode of Seinfeld where George's uh, fiance yeah. licked all the old envelopes and died from the poisoning from the glue? Yeah. Um, no, so she's sitting there going, bring me up some boards so I can get to work. I'm like, Mom, you're <laughs> He's like laying in bed with her leg elevated. Like, you're not going to bag and board books today. She's uh, angling for a raise there. I like. think yeah, so. she is. Yeah, she is. Angela doesn't know what uh, Fearsome is from, David. <clears throat> it's a new book by Ethan Van Skyver that's going to be coming out soon. That's it. That's this guy. <laughs> yeah, but David is, is uh, doing the artwork on Yeah, I know, but can't you tell us a little more about it? That's your elevator pitch? Uh, yeah, that was my, my elevator pitch. Um, it's about this guy, Eli, who uh, becomes uh, this character in his dream, but it ends up being real because it helps him in the real world solve murders um, uh, that happened. And uh, this is what he looks like. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think you nailed that character. He looks he looks yeah. haunted. He looks like he's he's going through no, those you know, those trauma. character sheets are awesome, man. <clears throat> yeah. and so it's also one of the things, right? Like, he doesn't world. want to fall asleep. Uh, well, he has narcolepsy, so he, he falls asleep at any given time. And then he goes into these uh this dream world of Nod. And then uh he sees these things that point him towards these crimes that are happening in the real world, and he unearths them in, uh, in the in the awake world, and he still has to fight some things in the in the dream world as well. So <clears throat> he's fighting on two fronts. I like it. Sounds like a winner. Yep. Norrin Rad says, my most anticipated new book. Wow. Yeah, that'll be really interesting. And the art not, the art looks great so far. The colors are fantastic, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. And Ethan well, seems to be having a whole lot of fun. He seems really inspired. Every time we talk, he's got some new cool idea that I didn't see coming. I was just like, whoa. Okay. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just that, that guy's mind is just uh, so creative, amazing, interesting. Yeah. Just my his live homie, are, are creative. Well, that, my that, homie and personal rival, Ellie McComicsgate, mm-hmm. <laughs> says, Does he see the elder abuse of Aaron's mom? <clears throat> oh, yeah. That's going to be, you know, in the book. <laughs> And uh, uh, hold on a second. I miss, a bummer out. Uh, Art of Roy says, David, doesn't that fearsome design look like comic, comic ghost writer? Co- I'm sorry. Yep. Cosmic ghost writer. So think of uh, little Nemo grown up who ends up turning into ghost writer. This is what that is. And Blackjack says, Dan, I love your Agents of Law. That drawing reminds me of that series a little bit. Yeah, that yeah, there was uh, that was my some of my best art was was I finally got hit my stride with Agents of Law and Barbed Wire at Dark Horse, you know. That's when it was like, yeah, this is actually good. And I had and, um Gary, did, did you know Ian Aiken? No, I never met him. Okay, 
Uh, I loved his inks over my work. It was just like, yeah, he's he just nailed uh, it. Yeah, he's uh, one of the one of the good inkers out there. Yeah. So I was like, because I was working. Yeah, you know, I always, Marvel, I always appreciated just, his work. Yeah. The the worst thing is when you get inks back and the inker like, not just couldn't do it, ignored ignored what you did. Yeah. And you're just like. Oh, you put especially if you put a lot of work into something and like line work and stuff, and they just like they just oh, didn't have time. Just, just like it's so. Well, isn't that really kind of a, isn't that kind of the problem though of like how things used to be is when, you know, it was always the deadline, right? And it was like if you, for whatever reason, whether your fault or the writer's fault for you know getting the script late or whatever, at some point someone has to make up that time, and then if it, it usually is going to end up being the the inker and the colorist and right. you're just like oh what happened here well we had to give it to six different guys so we could get it done you know like, yeah. Uh, uh. yeah great thanks david are you cross hatching is like the shadows on his eyes yeah so it's, that's what i thought i mean you you cross hatch his whole eyelid in the same amount of time and it taken me to do like three lines yeah, but mine is chicken scratch. Yours is like <laughs> laser focused. <laughs> chicken scratch has its place. So two minutes, you guys. Mine is almost done. Remarkably, I, I just go. can't believe that. Two minutes. I did a full drawing. I don't think this I'm gonna time, get last, Remember last time I I, I failed and I. Well, no, you did. Uh, you did Snake Plissken, didn't you? Last time? yeah, but I didn't finish it though. Well, it was kind of finished, which is so, kind of how it goes on this show. Isn't it? Don't finish it. Sleeves. Don't get it. Wizard sleeve says, "How come only your your sleeves are are wizard material?" But anyway, Wizard sleeve says, "I must have that pit, sir. It's like you made it just for me." I did. And he also he also will charge you an amount, <laughs> right? Me. See now you now you now I know you really want it. So yep. oh, yeah. You, 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 yeah, you showed your cards too too soon. Yeah. You gotta finish these skulls. You can't do a pit drawing on skulls, can you? No, it's I think it's a, a an actual law. <laughs> it's a law of pit. Yep. Is, is know, John Allen in the chat? Is, is, is I want to I want to get a review. Well, he was. I don't know if he still is, but he he was. I can't remember. So, who so, I you have enough time to do splatter. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't mask anything recently, about you know how many people there actually are actually in the comic book overall the comic book audience people that are actually readers of comics and supporters of comics and you know talking about the how oh as roy thomas made this comment you know that because we were discussing kirby's viewpoint of who created what versus stan's viewpoint of who created what and all that kind of stuff and uh he said you know he kind of made the joke at kind of the end of the that you know basically talking about it something that only about 150,000 people are concerned about or less you know mm -hmm. and uh i looked up i was pulling up some pit reference and i just typed in pit right not one picture of dale keown's pit came out it was usually university of pittsburgh or something else you know cherry pit things like that so i actually had to type in keown pit before anything came up and that just kind of reinforced this idea that we're we're in this very small niche group of yeah. fandom that is, you know, really into this stuff and knows all this stuff. But the average person, as Roy Thomas said, the average person doesn't know who Jack Kirby is. You walk on the street and it doesn't yeah. mean anything to him. Um, hold on a second. Uh, Wizard, Wizard Sleeve says, LOL, make it a Kit Carter's chimp skull. Too late. And Derail Gaming says, Fearsome is my most anticipated CG project. Did I read that already? I think you did. You can read you, it again. I, Keep reading yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're reading it. Derail Gaming? Is that who said it originally? I don't know. Well, 
anyway, it's uh, people are waiting for it. <clears throat> yeah. Angela Curry is giving you a, a flame. Is you on fire? Symbol. Yeah, flame symbol. She's she's into it. I should uh, I should draw a pit comic for Dale because he won't do it. Damn. Well, you know, he's a. Uh... He's more of a, he's turned into kind of a cover guy, you know? Although he's got a, I guess he's got a new story with, uh, in Gemstruck, right? It's new. Uh, is, he, is he drawing it? Yeah. But it's only like a few pages. Oh, okay. I understand it. Is someone else doing the rest? Or is yeah, it this is like an epilogue type thing, I think. Oh, okay. Like a bonus. I, was, yeah, I, I wondered about that. All right, uh, we ready to call it, gentlemen? Who's we? Hey, I'm trying to include everybody. <laughs> now, you, when you're done, now you bring every, everybody else in. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. <laughs> Hosting has its privileges. Yep. All right. Hmm. Sign okay, that. He's, he's signing it now. Well, you know, people are here to see the completed thing, right? So here we go. That's my head. Sorry about that. All right. Ding, 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 ding. We'll call okay. it done. Pizzles down. All right. We'll, I'll go first, and then uh, we'll move to Mr. Lawless as he's uh, given just a couple more seconds to. Uh... All right. I'm done, more or less. All right. Ooh. Hey. On You're on to something here. Pit Bay. There's a few skulls kind of quickly sketched down there at the bottom, but uh, I used uh, your guys' technique for heavy blacks on the chains there on his wrist so that... Uh, oh, that works. It works. Like chains. Nobody can be the wiser. Well, they can be, but... Uh, so here we go. Angela Curry says, where's Kelsey? We're getting, <laughs> we're getting questions all the way to the bitter end. So this is a weird combination. <laughs> is Angela making a comment on your piece by asking where Kelsey is? I That's know. hilarious. Maybe. Said it all aggressive, too. Where's Kelsey? <laughs> <laughs> Angela, why right do, here. Why do I no believe matter, right? Aaron, no matter what they say in the chat, I'm really digging this. Okay, thank you, Gary. Uh, so I, <laughs> he's not impressed. All right, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I take everything with a little bit of uh, cynicism here. Um, so I use the old brush pen, and I use the old Zig calligraphy pen, and I used uh, a little bit of Micronisms in there. So it's a little combination of just about everything. I did not use the thumbprint finger smudge though. Which maybe I should put a little like uh, smoke back here with the old. No, see you don't you don't smear it around. You dab it so you get the fingerprints. Yeah, right, like right. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Like, so anyway, there we go. Like bro cream. <laughs> a little dab will do you. <laughs> yep, exactly. So here we go. There's uh, there's my version of well uh, done. The two hour pit. Thank you very much, Gary. Appreciate that. Uh, Pope Peasy says free Kelsey. Um, <laughs> Angela's saying, no, I just got here. She didn't know. She's not making any sort of statement. Um, let's see here. Henry Jeremick says, Aaron, that looks great. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Norn Rad says, Dale will love this. Super cool. They're coming out for me now. This is just stunning. Thank you. Um, of course, Past Master Dan. Kelsey, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> yeah, Dan, you, you're a have officially been replaced. I kicked them out. Replacing Kelsey. I bumped them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so next week Kelsey's gonna have to do some fast talking to get back on the show. That's right. All right. So uh Dan, are you uh, ready? He's not getting review? out of that that easy. What are you talking yep. about? <laughs> I know this is his old plan. He's hoping that he never has to come on again. Nope. Nope. That's not how it works. Um 
Are you ready, Dan? I think so. Here we go. Dan Lawless, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's see if I can get and, this camera in the right position. Here. Now, who's this is Dr. M Love. Who is this again? Professor Dr. Blood. Blood. Professor Blood. Okay. From Graveyard Shift. Okay. So How did you exactly have time to do all that metal, the I know. shiny metal texture and man. <sighs> That is Done really it's all nice. pencil, though, you know? Whoops. Wow. And another patented great Dan Lawless face. There it is. And besides the face, that's a great gun. Oh, yeah. Simple and yet believable. Look at that. Great metal, Dan. Yeah. Man Cooch says Passmaster Dan. Not sure that uh, School Notcher <laughs> says that's badass. Great Geek Hero but Bubba. I haven't gone. Gun. The, the, the John Malin thumbs up yet. Spam bot, no pants. Um, not that that's not necessarily a compliment, it's just an observation. <laughs> um, ooh, this is brutal. When do the professionals start drawing? He says, Damn, wow. uh, right about now. <laughs> to the chest, Man. huh? Yep, that's right. Guys, yeah, back to the drawing table. Yep. <laughs> Can you, imagine, you imagine oh, being at hey. a show, being at a at a at a con, sitting near your table, and some somebody comes up to you and says, "Can I get a professional to do a commission for me?" <laughs> do you know where they are sitting? Oh, hey, we'll God. get there, you guys. Just keep it going, keep working. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a uh, Mike Miller's uh, pimping his channel, 7 p.m. on his channel tonight. That's Pacific time, I believe. For uh, Mike's uh, draw stream. Pimp, pimp, pimp. Um, hey, Mike. Well. All righty. So, uh, very nice, Dan. And again, thank you for joining us and contributing. Hey, thanks for Appreciate having me. Appreciate it guys. very much, uh, especially on such short notice. David Williams. Oh, my goodness. What the heck are you doing here? I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this is more, I'm thinking that it could be a, like, like a layout for a cover. So, how is this? Doing a stream of conscious type thing. So that's very, very cool. Wow. He's coming out of his brain. You gotta see it with the light behind it because there's pencils on the other side of it that fully complete it. So <clears throat> so that's what it is. That's really cool, man. And that's eleven by seventeen again. Yeah. Oh, nuts, dude. I know. So I'm thinking oh, if yeah. I if I do it for a cover, I'm going to fix this face, but I'm going to make it like it's pure light just coming out of here. And, you know, all this electrical stuff is going to be coming out and it's just like lighting him, you know, directly from his forehead and all of this. So are you going to use this? Out. Are you going to use this as a cover then? I don't know. I'll have to run it by Ethan. I can't mm. just, you know, I don't have the authority to say, yes, this is a cover. So, <clears throat> but... I like it as a concept. Yeah, that's really cool. Birdman Burr says, damn, David, awesome. Um, Bully Badger says, awesome. Nate313, yes. Uh, <laughs> Spambot's like, David finished a whole cover. So he's like, <laughs> suddenly the rest of us don't measure up. Is that what you're saying? I think that's what he's saying. Uh, Jake Blue says, great picture. Insane David says, Nora, Norinrad2 Turbo. Uh, Angela Curry says, that would be a nightmare headache. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Marcus Killigrew, great. There we go. Wizard sleeves, great hatch work. He's talking about Richard Hatch, of course. Um, <laughs> Fox Molder, insane in the membrane. He says, uh, "Let's see, great layout, Sky. Uh, let's see, sick." Says Ronan. Um, Matt Grendel. Now, this is perhaps the ultimate compliment. That would be. That would. Get me to pull it off the rack. Mm. It would indeed. If you saw a cover like that at your 7 Eleven on the old comic book rack, you'd grab that thing. Yep. Yep. Um, Marcus Killigrew says, send a DVS now. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. Well, there you go, folks. That is a uh, another spectacular show of uh, fun and excitement and witty banter and stories of King Arthur and B Arthur. And, uh, <laughs> uh, 
Arthur Murray. <laughs> 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 you're losing the young crowd you guys with those okay you know i think it's important to note number one you guys uh this this show is growing every week we had an audience of well over 200 almost the entire show and we're still there thank you guys so much for tuning in spreading the word bringing new people onto the show we really uh appreciate it very much if you haven't hit the like and subscribe at this point please do that subscribe to the channel so we can continue to grow um we will, as uh, we move forward, bring in uh, other guest stars along the way. We don't do it all the time. We just do it sporadically to keep things fresh. Uh, guest stars or Dan. That's right. Guest stars <laughs> or Dan if we can't uh, get anybody else. Um, but we want to know. Thank you, Dan, for showing up on such short notice, man. Yeah, really thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. A lot. Oh, my really gosh, you guys. I, you know I love being here. So, And uh, you guys remember uh, to check out dan's uh, youtube channel with instructional videos um you know on, on just drawing different types of things and uh, uh they're getting really really popular so go visit that i didn't put a link in here because i i of course i prepared this last night before it, i knew it's I, just how to draw comics by dan Lullis and and uh it's uh i'm having fun making these things but i need watch hours folks to get monetized so that's just right put, uh, put, hit the playlist and let it play all day <laughs> And walk away. Go get a cup of coffee. Help Dan get monetized. Uh, real quickly, everybody's got a campaign that's here as well. Uh, Kit Carter, uh, I like to point out three days left. That's the 30 day closeout, will be Friday evening after we're all recovered from Thanksgiving. So if you got nothing to do, uh, check out my channel. I'll probably be going and drawing and doing all sorts of weird things um, to help promote that. Uh, so uh, the link is in the description of this video. You can back that if you don't mind. I'd greatly appreciate it um, if you haven't already, of course. And if you have already, do it again. Dang it. Uh, we also have Gary Martin still has his book, Brush with Destiny, um, the ink art of Gary Martin. Gary, how much longer do you think this is going to be open Good question. Um, not that long, because I, I have a couple of pieces of artwork that I'm working on that will go in the book and then have to uh, assemble it and send it to the printer. So really not that long. So if you haven't backed yet, get in there, man. This is on uh, Fund My Comic, and you'll, again, you'll find the link in the description of this video. It's just tons of uh, really cool artwork by uh, our own Gary Martin. Hey, thanks so, to Angela. She just dropped my... Uh my that, my uh, channel in the link so appreciate that thank you Thanks, Angela. appreciate you guys helping out who gary got the red sony up there on the page yep. to, to tantalize the audience that is so, just oh, that just blows my mind it's so wild yep. it's not too late to get What's, in on what that. was the reference on that gary we're, we're, uh his neighbor is one yeah that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> bubbles peeking out the window yeah. you got the binoculars yeah. is that through yeah. the through the blinds yeah, I, uh, she's, yeah, yeah. My girlfriend's claiming that I'm stalking her. Well, <laughs> well, she's not my girlfriend yet. <laughs> my yeah, girlfriend. yeah, he's good. He's got to put his yeah. game down. He said, yeah, um, I'm going to call you Ginger Snaps. Uh, <laughs> uh, David Williams did the artwork on Bass Reeves, West of Hell. Of course, is written by our friend Kevin Grievous and uh, published by our friends at Allegiance Arts. They're telling us now that they hope to fulfill this in January. So you guys are not going to be much time left on this one. So if you haven't backed, you can get the wraparound soft cover by David Williams, the hardcover by our friend Andrew Robinson, who's also been on this show. Wait, uh, lots uh, of Grievous wrote, to... wrote that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Grievous yeah. wrote that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I really enjoyed you guys. I enjoyed that interview of him. That, he was he's such a good interview, man. Yeah. Yeah. He well, he's man, when, anytime you got a guy with got a lot of stories and Hollywood yeah. and all that kind of stuff, it's great. So uh, this is on Indiegogo. You'll find the link in the description of this video as well. So you guys uh, go check that out. You won't be sorry. Um, I think you do have an unread uh, super chat, Aaron. Oh, that's right. There it is, Spambot. Thank you so much for $5. Appreciate that. Um, super cool art tonight. Thanks for the show. Was there a proper hashtag for people posting draw-alongs after the show, or do I just tag Aaron? Uh, you, can, you can, yeah, you can hashtag Graybeards. Yeah, Graybeards. Uh, you can put all and, of us. 
who are yeah, and, and then at all of us, and we'll spread it around, help spread it around as well. So, because I know a lot of people do draw while they're watching the show, so you guys please do post, you know, on Twitter or wherever you're at, um, that you know your artwork, so we can see it. Uh, yeah, Paul Peasy is asking about Bass Reeves' just one book. It's the collection of the miniseries. Is that right, David? Yes, six issues. Oh. But the last issue was never published, so it's the first. The last time two issues be... were not published. Okay, so the last two issues—that's new material. Two issues of new material be in that book. So um, you want to grab that? Um, all right, guys. Uh, you guys, everybody, have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we assume Kelsey will be back next week again thank you dan lawless for joining us last minute it was great having you as always um we thank you guys in the chat for supporting us and being here every week we couldn't do it without you so thank you enjoy thanksgiving and we will see you Happy guys right here next time on graybeard studio good night <laughs>